Yeah, I don't know what happened on that last one. I'll explain a little bit as I kick things off here for the after chat. But yeah, that was all new. I've never experienced that before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely a reboot of the PC. So I, it was really weird. I came back. Uh, I was going to show you the. In, in fact, we should just be able to like do that right now. Yeah, I was just going to show that uh, the merit badge book, and I'll, I'll kind of wrap up a little bit my thoughts. Um, this this merit badge book is really really cheap, and you can get them at scouting stores. You can just buy the ebook online. Um, I think the link is in the description to Amazon for the ebook. If you took this book with what's written in it, and uh, took your Gordon West book or your studying on hamstudy.org, they really go well together because they're almost talking, they're talking about similar things, but they're, they're, uh, they're not. They're, they're talking about it from different viewpoints, different angles. Because if you think about it, a, a scout, a, a, somebody that's in scouting, they're not trying to be like the best ham radio operator. They're trying to get like a really wide swath of what the hell is even this thing, right? That's what they're trying to do. And so this merit badge book is actually really, really good for people that don't know much about radio at all. Like they're coming in to all of this just, you know, like, I don't even know what all this is. So this 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 book is great. Like it's actually really, really good. I would recommend you just buy this and, and give it to people along with the Gordon West book or, you know, whatever. It, it's super cheap. I think they're like six bucks or something like that. You can buy them online, I think. Uh, anyway, that, that, that was the whole thing I was going to wrap up with. And then I was going to wrap up with a big, big, big thank you to the patrons. Thank you for all of your support. We really do support or we really do appreciate your support to the channel. It allows me to do crazy things like this. Um, although this wasn't that crazy. I think this is like something that needed to be done a long time ago. Like people should be talking about this, uh, this radio merit badges and including in, encouraging scouts to go get it because it's a really good one. It really is. Uh, next week, Next week, yeah, patron picks episode. So the vote is live if you are on Patreon. And uh, one of the options, which is trending right now, actually leads to a second vote. So that should be interesting um, if that ends up happening. So I, hopefully I can still switch scenes and everything. So far, so good. All right. We'll see. Never experienced that before. That was just a straight up uh, fail on OBS's point. So, hey, this is the after chat. Welcome to the after chat. The, the point of the after chat is to try and just answer ham radio questions, not get picky about what they are. Um, just try and help out. And it's not just me, although, yeah, I, I do answer a fair share of questions. Um, we go to the Discord and the Discord has just a ton of really, really smart hams on the ham radio crash course Discord. There is a link in this video description that will take you there. We use the voice and text chat under live-stream. If you scroll down the server towards the bottom, you'll see something that says live-stream, after chat, that kind of thing. You click on that, and we'll just take your questions live and, and do our best to answer your questions. Because ham radio is hard, particularly if you're starting out. We don't expect people are just going to like get it right out of the chute. There's no way. So that's what this is for. Our goal here is to help you get ham radio active and stay active. So I'm going to join the Discord right now, and let's see if I can do so, and hopefully you'll be able to hear all my friends on the Discord side. So one second. Yeah, that was a really wild explosion. Explosion. Not apartment building. Like, so. uh, 
There we go. Probably three feet each. Uh, just try and get it as low as possible, Ender. Stand by your beds, he's here. <laughs> yeah, Don't man. Worry. I'm I'm here. It 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 didn't fully explode, so we, we made it all the way. I had to do a restart, but we're we're back uh Full we're Liberty Gibbets. We're back mm -hmm. live. Full Liberty Gibbets. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the after chat. Uh, if there was a, uh, are you trying to wrap up an answer to a question? If you want to go ahead and do that, that's fine. Go ahead. Was oh, uh, somebody. No, Rob was answering. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But Fair Ferris, just, we, can, we can DM me. We can muck around with it later. Back to you, Josh. Okay, sounds good. Okay, very good. All right. Well, so this is the proper after chat. We are now in the Discord. So if you join us on the Discord and you have questions, we want to answer them. So what we devote to the First part of the after chat is just saying, hey, if you're new here, like first timer, and you'd like to say hi, you don't have to have a question necessarily. But if you're a first timer and would like to say hi and or you have a question, go ahead and come forward just like you would on a repeater. Give your call sign or your name and uh, we'll take you immediately. So anybody first timer wants to say hi or ask a question, come now. It's okay. We'll wait for people to come up to speed, too, because Discord does have a timeout. So, uh, again, anybody with a question, that could be on the YouTube side of the house. We look at the comments, or it could be on um, on Twitch. We see those as well. They're all linked together. And our goal here is to answer questions. So we'll give another shot, and then we'll move on to something else for a little bit. Anybody in there with a first time want to say hi or ask a question, come now. Kilo nine, Romeo, Oscar, Bravo, K nine, Rob. Not my first time here, but uh, I have an experience based question. Uh, so I am running right now. I've got a pretty legit setup. I run barefoot, barefoot on a DX commander, but I'm moving. I just took a bush pilot job up in Alaska, and I'm going to be in an apartment for a while. Who here has successfully, uh, just curious, any pointers I can get on an indoor HF antenna? I'm like on the fence. Should I spend a bunch of money and try this? Or, you know, is it just an absolute waste? I'm just curious if anybody has experience with this. Um, are we talking VHF, UHF, or HF? HF. So I'm assuming because this is a, a bush pilot, you're going to be up in the north where it's cold, right? I'm actually going to be in Southeast Alaska. Um, I'll okay. be based in Not bad. Juneau. Oh, Juneau. Okay. So, I mean, it gets cold, but it's, I, I've been to Juneau a couple of times, actually. Um, do you know anything about the area? Like, could you throw a wire out the window, or what are you thinking right now? So, no, that's not going to be an option. Um, I may have some options present themselves later, but I'm not going to know until I'm there doing it. Right now, what I know is a safe bet is I have a window with a clean shot of the ocean. So, like, maybe a mag loop or something? Um, that's kind of where it sounds like. It's kind of where we're going. Uh, because if you can't really get something outside for various reasons, then a mag loop is... It's kind of your limitation at that point, right? Does anybody have another idea? Mag loops to work. Can, well, can you put any, do you have a balcony or anything? No. Yeah, there's a balcony, but like, I don't know that I'll be able to use it. Plus, like, we're renting and the people we are going to be renting from, they live under us. So, like, I don't want to make things too weird. You know what I mean? Start them off slow, but. You might could oh. put a, a, yeah. a vertical like a Wolf River coils or something, but yeah, you'd you'd have some radials hanging down somewhere. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's tough. You you could just, just do uh, the find some wire that's the same color as the side of the apartment. <laughs> they won't see it. The the other thing you could do is just like have ham sticks and just get one of those little railing mount things. Uh, in fact, what am I thinking of? So they make a, a mount that will clamp on to the side of like a trucker's mirror. And a lot of times the screws are long enough that they can go over a, a railing on a balcony. And then you can kind of, you know, cant it a little bit so it doesn't hit the roof or anything like that. And then the uh, the radial system, you don't have to, like, drop it down into your neighbor's area. You could just have it, like, stretched out and make, like, kind of a loop in the balcony area and then just feed the coax into your house. Uh, if you had a window that you could feed the coax through with one of those window pass-through things like Diamond makes, uh, then that would be even better, right? 
Yeah, I like those ideas. I really do. I don't think that I'll go for any of that. Uh, if I was going to do anything, I think it's going to be trying to run an indoor mag loop. I'm curious, like, has anybody went big on that? Uh, like, I saw the chameleon one. It looks pretty nice. I will be really close to salt water. So, you know, that signal should uh, bounce around pretty well. I'm just curious, has anybody tried the mag loop out the window thing? Yeah, so uh, mag loops are very portable, so they're really easy to pack with you. And obviously, Chameleon has that little compensator thing they call it, the power compensator, which I'm told it actually does a thing. It's not just a you know a, a hunk of plastic that they they hogged out. Um, they are working on a high powered uh, mag loop right now. When I went on the factory tour with them, uh, they were talking about that. There are actually a ton of plans online that if you get the right capacitor, you can do much, much higher power uh, on a mag loop. There are companies that that have uh, high powered mag loops as well, but they're not necessarily as portable. Anybody else want to add in on mag loop comments? No, man. Yeah, go for it, Paul. Yeah, I, I have a uh, chameleon mag loop with the um, solid, the solid aluminum mm. ring mm -hmm. and also use the uh, compensator and i do 60 watts with no sweat yeah do you do it from inside your house from inside mm -hmm. do you work stations pretty well uh my first contact was from new jersey to nova scotia on less than 10 watts oh holy cow that's that says a lot and then uh my second question on that Probably a stupid question, but, uh, you know, got to ask anyway. Like, uh, if I get up around 100 watts on that mag loop, that mag loop's just going to be a few feet from me uh, bi-directional. Is there any radiation concern there? There, There the is. Radiation. Oh, go yeah, ahead, the Paul. Radiation runs uh, the same direction as the uh, loop. But you can't, and you, you have to also use the compensator. The compensator is supposed to take you up to, I think, 100 watts on single sideband. No. 25 watts. No, I don't think so. Yeah. No, what I don't it, think. 50 and 25? Uh, yeah, I think it's like 50 and 25. Palmer? Yeah, 50 and 25. Let me just add really quickly, uh, a 100-watt mag loop, there's not a lot of those on the market. You, you're almost in homebrew territory. Uh, but there's a comment. Go ahead, comment. Yes, this is Craig. Um, I don't know if any of you are watching uh, Kevin, K7SW. Uh, um, he does a lot of the... Uh, um, he does a lot of the modeling and the chameleon products, and uh, not even a few months ago, he did a lot with uh, not only their transmitting uh, mag loop, but their receiving loop that's more commonly known as Alex loops. What? Chameleon and Alex are not the same company. What do you mean? Uh, Alex Loop is just a design that's been given over the years to the style of uh, receiving loop that uh, Chameleon has. Um, and that one you cannot transmit in. It's got that same circuit you just mentioned with the preamp and the tuner. Very, very good receiving antenna for the size and convenience of using it indoors. Uh, I have the receiving loop. That's actually my secondary receive antenna on my 7610. And I have the the new preamp they have. I didn't know that they called it the Alex Loop though, because Alex is an actual uh, antenna developer, and he's got his own company. That I did a video on his uh, transmit receive loop. But uh, interesting. Okay, I, I'll have to go look into that. Um, well, I, didn't I appreciate. Hear, I, didn't I appreciate hear. the help, gentlemen. I really do. Uh, I'll probably just go for it. I'll probably dig into that aluminum chameleon and just try it and hope for the best. It's better than nothing. So the only issue you're going to have with the aluminum chameleon is that it's a full loop. It's a big piece of metal. They do. They used to make a sectioned off, like a three-piece loop that was a little bit easier to package and carry around. Uh, you might have to contact them, though, if they don't do that anymore. They're, the three companies that I mentioned for mag loops to check out, obviously Chameleon, Alex Loop, which I did the review of, and then Alpha. The, those are the three companies. Um, so you, you can take a look at that. The uh, chameleons, they have ways to get into 80 meters, but uh, just my point of view, I'm not a big fan of loops in 80 meters or 40 meters. 40 meters and 80 become to the point where it's so touchy and so difficult to actually make them uh, really, really effective that it's 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 kind of not worth the, the effort. Um, chameleon does have a, a controller box for doing remote tuning, now which makes that easier to get it like 
close to the sweet spot. The the problem with loops is they're they're really affected by anything metallic around them. Even a human body will will change their tuning drastically. So if you're talking about putting it in the window of your apartment, your apartment's largely made of metal and it's got wire in it and all that stuff. You may find that you're not able to really bring the SWR down, particularly on the lower frequencies for like 40 meters, et cetera, et cetera. So just keep that in mind. Comment. Awesome, man. That's a, that's a great point, Josh. I'm happy you said that. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate all the insight, everybody. K9, Arobi. That's a really good question to kick this off. But uh, there was a comment in there, so go ahead, comment. I was just going to say, um, I didn't hear what his radio was, but if there's any way to do remote at a family member's house or something like that, just throwing an idea out there. Yeah, yeah I, do, uh, I do a lot of soda work. I've got a mountain topper uh, that I really like for soda work. I do CW, and then uh, I got a 705, but my main rig's an FTDX10. I, I think what uh, Ferris is, is saying is you could potentially buy a radio like a Flex. Uh, you could install it at a you know relative's home and an antenna and just remote into that via the internet and then make contacts that way. Remoting ham radio is a, is a huge thing right now that a lot of people are doing. Yeah, I saw that. I was looking at that, uh, the new SCU-10 or whatever, the LAN connection for the FTDX-10. Um, that's an option, too. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Okay, cool. Good question to kick this whole thing off. So hopefully you've broken the ice now and 100 internets to you for breaking the ice. Anybody else in there would like to say hi or ask a question? Come now. Wow, man, we did it. We did it, guys. We've answered all the ham radio questions. I have a question. <laughs> Paul, go for it. What What are you taking for your uh, your, your cold? Uh, I, whatever it is, I got it from Hamcation. I, I mean, didn't. Like, I need my voice lower than it is. I didn't get it from Hamcation. I got it from my wife. Uh, so I, I've got Mucin XD. And I was taking Robitussin at night, and for the headaches, I was just taking an Alka-Seltzer before bed kind of thing. Thanks. I'm on the Mucinex, though. Yeah, Mucinex D specifically. You want the pseudoephedrine. That's what you yeah, want. Yeah, that's what I... Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not good for my heart, but uh, I'm taking it twice a day. Yeah, you, you got to uh, gotta go give your, your ID behind the counter at the pharmacy to get the good stuff. We get a chance. I got a technical question for the guys. Craig, go ahead. And then we got a couple of questions on YouTube. So don't worry. We'll get to you guys on YouTube. Uh, go ahead, Craig. All right. Thanks. Um, I don't know if anybody's had any experience uh, getting a like a, a trolley cable between two tall trees to pull up <laughs> uh, dipoles and stuff like that. But uh, I have no experience getting a line up and over trees that are, you know, 50 foot tall. Um, if anybody has, you know, any good suggestions on getting that Mason's line up and over the tree so I can pull a cable up like that. Have you tried a throw bag? Throw line, throw bag? An I arc? would 20 years ago, uh, okay. but I'm, I'm pretty gimped up, you know, definitely senior citizen now, just as far as mechanical. I don't even think I can pull my bow back. Dumb question. Do you have a, a drone by chance? That was the final question. Uh, does anybody know of any of those uh, cheaper eBay drones that would be able to pull a Mason's line up to 50? Now, if you don't have a drone, like buying a cheap one is probably not the way to step into that whole thing. Uh, they make slingshots that'll do it, that have an underslung like, uh, fishing line carrier. And then you just pull the, the line through that has your arborist line or whatnot. Um, Potato gun. Potato gun. There's a potato gun launcher. Use a fishing else? pole. Fishing pole Pulling and a lead weight. Ice pole, get a baseball guy. Fishing pole and a lead weight. That's a good idea. You'll easily do 50 feet if it's just a lead weight at the end. I was watching yeah. the guy who runs soda beams, and he actually throws it backwards, and it seemed to work much better than throwing it forwards. Yeah. Uh, so, Mike, that's a really good – that was Mike, right? Uh, that's a really good point. Usually when you when you start someone out throwing arborist line, you, you do it almost like uh, I would call it granny style, like how you, you teach a kid to roll a bowling ball. They just kind of, you know, toss it with the two hands with their legs spread. Well, just imagine that, but turn with your back to the tree. 
and then throw it overhead behind you. And it'll, it'll actually go uh, very far for someone that's never done it before. It's like a keg throw. That's an excellent idea. I wouldn't have dreamed that one up in a million years. Uh, any tips on aiming with the over or the head granny throw? Yeah, make sure that the tree is like directly behind you. And don't let there be a bunch of houses behind the tree. Uh, yes. So that the, uh, the overthrow is real. The overthrow is real. So, or yeah, you... electrical lines. Mm-hmm. I'll post a picture of the offending pine tree. Yeah, you... yeah. If there's a lot of nothing around it, then you don't have a problem. But I, I've got too many houses for me to throw lines really, really high because I've made the mistake of hitting my neighbor's trees. Not, not, I mean, I've gotten into their neighbor, my neighbor's trees and gotten stuff stuck in them. And that's not necessarily something you want to do. Any ball players around you, you know, high school kids play ball. Hmm. Well, I've got that thing that Ferris has or Ferris is talking about the, the arborist big, sh- uh, big shot. Yeah. It's a huge, huge slingshot. And it's meant for those weights that you were talking about earlier. Oh, like the 12 uh, ounce. Yeah. You put boys. a 12 ounce weight in there and nice. then shoot it with that. And it'll go up over a hundred feet. I mean, that's always the thing too. You just get a kid to do it. That's an option. You need neighbors like Mike's neighbors. Have you seen Mike's videos? He puts he puts stuff in his neighbor's trees all the time. Yeah, you, if you got permission, it's not a problem. But <laughs> all right, very good. Well, thank you for the question. Appreciate that. Anybody else I in there? Post those oh. Trees. If anybody wants to write a response, that would be awesome. Hmm. Greg, whereabouts are you? I'm on the uh, state line of Wisconsin and Illinois, about 20 minutes away from uh, the dude. Oh, well, shoot. Why don't you just call up the dude and ask him to come out and throw the line? He'll make a video on it. Yeah. I absolutely will. He's, uh, they've got a pretty nice group of POTA guys that yeah. come up to the house there at Chain of Lakes. I'm really hoping now that my health is turning around that I can hook up with these guys. Uh, you know what would be funny is, like, I, I bet it would be an easy thing to do, too, is just meet up with them at, like, a POTA thing and, like, you know, run radio with them or whatever and, and, and do the activation and just be like, hey, guys, by the way, like, I want to chase more POTA, but I'm having a hard time getting the line in the tree. I just can't really throw it, you know, like I would want to to get it high up. Can anybody take, like, 30 minutes, come by my house and just just run that up into a tree so I can get a a, a tow line set up? That's you. They'd, they'd come out. No problem. Or if there's mm-hmm. anybody in the HRC, uh, CC community, you can ask them too and ham help or anything like that. Um, that would, uh, likely work too. So there was a question. What is the discord? So the link is in the description. It's the ham radio crash course discord. Our whole, you know, basic purpose of being is to help people and get started in amateur radio and continue to grow. And then we've got lots of other chat rooms too, for all the interesting complexities of amateur radio. Okay, very good. Craig, I hope that helped you. All right, let me go back a step. We got... Uh, Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, question. Did they fix the hair trigger power button on the new TNC4? We will find that out shortly. I have the new MobiLink TNC4 right here that we're going to open up in a little bit. So I, I am. Uh, that's my most curious thing because that is the biggest downside of this uh, device. Did you get any notification that it shipped, or did it just yes. show up? Oh, no. I, I got notification last week that it shipped. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't gotten notification mine shipped. I've heard other guys on uh, Facebook saying they're getting theirs, but... Is it uh, uh, spam filtered by chance? Um, Yes, but I mean, I, I, checked, I checked my... Oh, by the way, I just got my Sark track. Uh, it just, just hit the door. So, uh, uh, and I... Uh, the last I knew it was in Germany, but uh, the mobile link, uh, I haven't gotten any notifications and yeah, I do check my spam. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got a first timer question from Tim W first timer, KD seven DDG Tim antenna question for H O a restriction looking to string an antenna under the eaves on the side of the house. I have the ability to put up 
a 40 meter off center and this is on discord so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to find where he wrote that uh i think i lost it oh boy i lost it in the mix of all the other stuff uh, oh there it is uh okay long wire 40 meter off center fed or end fed half wave or just long wire the apex of the side of the house is 18 feet to the top of the roof and slopes on each side feed point would be somewhere along the 20 foot flat part the coax so i'm um tim i i don't see a question in there it's a lot of statements about the reality here's here's the question i have is uh well it's not a, it's not a question it's a statement too just go do it yeah just go do it everything you said run the wires around get the feed point to where you need it and uh and try it uh, if you had a question of F, uh, end fed half wave or off center fed, I, um, gosh, do we have K6 ARK? We do. I, I have not attempted Eve installation on an off center fed or an end fed half wave on an Eve. So I don't know uh, if one is going to perform better than the other. Does anybody have thoughts on that? The HOA ham did do a video on Eve install. I don't remember if it's an infed half wave or which one he put up. But I don't. He's, yeah, he's HOA restricted too. I would hope so with a channel name like that. But I don't know that there's necessarily one is better than the other for an Eve's installation. No, and if you if you got gutters, that actually works pretty well. Within reason, I, I think that. Yeah, I think the challenge with an Eve installation is that the proximity to other stuff is going to throw off your tuning a little bit with any resonant antenna. Yeah. So I would almost lean toward uh, an end-fed random wire style antenna, something with a tuner so you uh -huh. can just accommodate for what throws it off. Yeah. You know what? Um, now that you mentioned that, that's a really good point. So, Tim, they make a ton of external tuners that can be mounted like up against the the house the body of the house up into the eaves section and then you can just run a wire pretty much almost any length uh, along the eaves and then run that uh, coax line into the shack those external tuners are really really good because they're connected right at the antenna point there's a a myriad of companies that make external tuners. And in fact, you can find a lot of them decently priced at Hamfest. That would be, you know, now I, I think I, uh, I think I'm with, uh, with Adam here, instead of trying to like get a resonant antenna to be happy and then ultimately just having to use a tuner, why not just use an external tuner right at the connection point and just be good to go. That's a great point, Adam. N nice. Good, good idea. I can recommend the MAT40, um, and that has control leads for all the major manufacturers, and that's a, a remote tuner. Is that the um, – that's the one Gordo likes, right? No, that's not the one I'm thinking it's, of. It's basically the same idea as the ICOM AH4. You know, you just – it has a wire – well, you, you put a counterpoise on the ground lug, and there's, you know, a wire, a, a wire connector on it, and then you just put a length of wire on it and tune it up. Well, it's just the one I'm thinking of. It's going to bug me until I figure it out. Gordo has this this brand he really loves and I I don't know that they're like they're they're not one of the big manufacturers of these things and so they don't show up as often. I'm going to have to keep looking. STG? I think it's the yeah, I think it is the STG. Yeah, he really likes the STG tuners. Let me let me pull up the web here. Uh, let's see. STG. SGC. Sorry. Oh, SGC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never available. Yeah, this is a this is the one. Yep, it will it. tune a wet noodle. Yeah, these guys. If you can find them, they're uh, and you can sometimes get them at at Hamfest. They're they're uh, they're really quite good. Not cheap. Five hundred seventy-five dollars is not cheap, but yeah, it'll 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 do what you want it to do. Oh my God, they go up to fifteen hundred dollars. Holy smokes! They do have one that's three seventy-five, and it says add to cart. So you, 
you may be able to get one of these. SGC 237 uh, will take 100 watts. There What's you go. a 235 do? 235, 500 watts. Holy smokes. Yeah, that was the first coupler I ever ordered, and I had it on order for over a year. Never available. Yeah, it's smoking. All right, literally. Literally smoking. All right, couple of, uh, let's go back to the Discord. Anybody here for the first time and would like to say hi or ask a question? Come now. I love it. All of our questions are on the oh, uh, comment. Go ahead. You know that the mountain top of the red one, uh, I think it's the four band one, is now available again. Oh my goodness. Oh, we got a. Only 100 available. It's already sold out. I was going to say. Sold. The fact you even mentioned it, it's gone. <laughs> oh no, it's order that was, that order was, page paused. Oh no, I was only on there yesterday. They had some available this morning. They had like yeah. twelve left this morning when I checked, and then I checked uh, like an hour ago, and they were sold out. Yeah, people are asking me all the time, like, "Oh, when's that available? You know, can you tell? Can you tell us when they're available?" I'm like, guys, you know how fast they sell out. And I, I have one, so I'm not like hard pressed to find one. So you've got to you've got to troll these websites. This is LNR Precision. If you want one of these uh, radios, you have to watch their website. That that's the only way to get them. Like the thing that sucks though with the the four B is that it's it's big. It's it well relatively speaking, um, it's a lot bigger than the three B, and it's a lot bigger than it needs to be, in my opinion. Um, and the 5B is actually slightly smaller and has more desirable bands. It's got 15 and I think 17 on it. And the 4B is 20, 30, 40, 80. So I don't know. I, I Personally, I'm not a big fan of the 4B. The the 4B is bigger than the 5? Yeah. Yeah, the 5B was actually a little bit smaller than the 4B. That's the first time I'm hearing that because – interesting. As I thought the 5B was the largest out of all of them from the images I saw, so I have to go back I'll, and look. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to see if I can find uh, comparison photos. Um, but from what I recall, the 5B is actually slightly smaller case size than the four, the current 4B. So just as a comparison, I just grabbed my 4B, and you can see how much bigger it is next to the 3B. It is huge. It's huge. More uh, more flexing on the uh, the stream. I apologize. And and the thing with it though, to me, is that it's like it's if you have the KX2 handy, it's the 4B really isn't much uh, smaller than the KX2. It's 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 getting pretty close to that kind of size. Uh, yes. Yeah, I I, I hear you. Uh the, the well, the 5B is nice too because you can just cram it with you know 13.8. And it doesn't complain as opposed to the 3B. But, you know, I hear what you're saying. All right, question on the YouTube side. Question, I am an avid DX Commander user, so my next upgrade will be a beam. Now I have got a Mosley TA-53 as a gift. I'm grateful for that. However, I get a mix of reviews for them. See, this, this is also a statement. It's not really a question. Does anybody have a TA-53, a Mosley? I can't really answer you because I've not experienced that antenna. Nobody has one. All right. I think Chuck does, but that doesn't do us any good on the live stream. Uh, I worked with a guy on Monday that was using a Mosley. How did he sound, Mike? <laughs> he was uh, he was actually in my video for uh, that for that Fairfield Lake State Park. He was running QRP with his seventy three hundred. And uh, I had to, I had to ask him. I'm like, you're running QRP with a 7300. He said, Yep. I said, What antenna you running? He said, A Mosley. I was like, Oh, all right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there you go. If you want to uh, get away around the character limit on YouTube, join us on the Discord. And I can see your questions over there in logger form, like Tim W did, and he added images to his question, which made it really easy. All right. So question from Brad. I have a rig expert AA2000, which is a big boy. 
and have thought about getting one of the stick analyzers as well. Curious your thoughts on pros cons of adding the stick and which one, 230, 500 Pro or X Pro. Uh, it's totally based on what your upper limit of frequency needs are. I think uh, getting 70 centimeters in there is is kind of the sweet spot and you don't need to go higher than that. So that would be your Stick 500 or your Stick Pro. Uh, the X Pro, which is the new one that has been introduced, is just the Stick Pro with a higher frequency set. If you don't need those frequencies, at least you don't think you need those frequencies, at least for your portable antennas that you're going to be dragging out, then there's not a whole lot of reason to have that device. With that said, uh, the sticks are probably more portable friendly than the AA2000 is. But I don't know. Do any of you guys use the AA2000 or that style of analyzer in a portable environment? Yeah. What, what's, what's the issue with it? I have a 1400. Yeah, that's and, got a nice screen to use too, so. Yeah, yeah, and I you know, I I don't know. I mean, I've also got a stick. I I carry them both portable. It just uh uh it's it's just whichever one I can see when I'm walking out the door. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, a stick a stick is a great great uh deal and of course uh, with the bluetooth on it you can do, you can use it with your phone. Um, I do connect the, uh, the bigger one to my computer and use it that way. You can do mm. that with a stick too, but, right. um, I, you know, to me, it's like six of one half dozen the other. It's nice to have the larger screen sometimes, but, um, I have no issues using the stick. The stick has one thing. I think when you, uh, when you're doing the, like, if you're going to sweep, uh, a DX commander or, or a multi-band antenna, it'll, uh, you can hit that multi thing and it'll do the full sweep and then tell you which, where you're resident on ham bands, mm -hmm. which is kind of fun. And uh, that functionality is not really in the uh, 1400 style uh, analyzers. Yeah. Good point. Uh, we got a first timer question. And let's see, first time here from Tiki Cowboy in Florida. Tiki Cowboy. So like a tiki style, like a tiki bar, but also a cowboy in Florida. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, let's see. K4TXN had a question. I got to find it over on Discord because it's a longer one. Did you see the one from the guy in uh, Anchorage, Alaska? I didn't. If you're, by the way, if you guys are on Discord, please try and get on to voice so you guys can just ask your questions because it's going to be a lot. Oh, he's on YouTube. Track. Okay, but if you if you join us on Discord, you can just talk, and that helps me out a lot, and I appreciate being helped out. Uh, okay, first timer, interesting solution for uh the apartment. The apartment question. I'm in an apartment, but my shack is in the truck. Winlink, FT8, whatever, FT891, FTM400, need to get something for the apartment. Um, well, oddly enough, it's it's easier to just like set up a station in your vehicle most of the time than try and set up in an apartment, believe it or not. Because you can always just mount antennas on a vehicle, and they're pretty good ground planes, and you can drive somewhere where there's no RFI. The problem with apartments is there's RFI all over the place, and that's what, you know, is always going to kill you. Ham sticks are better anyway. But you can okay. always use the balcony. Explore the balcony space. Radial wires can be mobbed up and not necessarily coiled in a tight coil, but looped around in big loops. Like they they don't really get that upset. It's off, it's always best if you can stretch them out flat. But if you can't, like you know, do what you got to do. You, you can make. You it know work. what else? Yeah, you know what else worked really well in our apartment was the. Um, Chameleon makes that clamp. Um, yes. Like the clamp we used to, I used to clamp the clamp on the top rail of the railing and then the first did a Wolf River River coil and then just did a straight seventeen foot radio and dropped uh all my um um other the just got brain for it. Um 
dropped all the other wires straight down below to my neighbors um, and used like 27 gauge wires so nobody could barely see it. But that right. that worked really well. I've caught hell for the uh, for advertising that clamp. I like the clamp. I've used the clamp so many times, but it's it's not that cheap. The clamp works great. It's no, not it's cheap, awesome. though. It's not. It is not, but it's also really well made. Yeah. Is and, this a little clamp that sits on, like, a bench or something, that one? Yeah, it'll go on a bench or a railing, and it has the ground lug on the side, so you can just tap uh, right into it with it. Yeah, those things are a bit pricey. I know I knew if you go to, oh, like, yeah. the old CB store, they sell them. You could get the ones for the CBs and just repurpose them. Well, but you can uh, angle it. Yeah. The uh, the advantage, uh, well, I, I'll I'll go back one step. Go to a go to a store that sells CB stuff, and there's a there's a, a vice grip antenna clamp. It's literally a vice grip that has a, a angle bracket on it, and you take that uh, what is it quarter twenty uh, twenty quarter I don't remember, but the um, the hamstick mount. You can attach a hamstick mount to that angle iron, and you just vice grip that on the side of something metallic. There's your ground plane, basically, assuming you got a good metal to metal connection. Works great. You're talking about three eight twenty four. That's it. Three eight twenty four. Thank you, uh, Shane. And and that works fine. The, those little vice grip things. They they've got them at. Uh, I think they got them at HRO. The last time I was there, I thought I saw one. In fact, I should go buy one of those and do a video on it. I mean, I I used to use a truck mount on a aluminium window in mm -hmm. a block of flats and i just, just used to trap it mm -hmm. in the window and like screw it on I, I worked a load of americans on cb back in the day like that with just this thing sticking out about 45 degrees yep yeah and um just because aluminum isn't magnetic it doesn't mean it's not it can't work as a ground plane totally works okay uh, Jamscan, what's your question? Link in description, Josh, at, I don't know what the question is on Twitch. Oh, for, for, for the, uh, three ace 24 thingy. Oh, be, boy. no, I, no, you just look up CB vice grip. It, it's literally a cheap pair of vice grips with a small, yeah. Yeah. like two inch plate welded on the side of it. Yeah. with a hole. I, prob I probably already have the thing. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, K4TXN, silly question, how do I PTT this thing? Go into your settings if you're on the uh, software on your computer. Lower left-hand corner is user settings, and you have to set a PTT button. If you're on your phone, there's literally a button that'll display. And the reason we do PTT in the chat is just because there's so many people in the Discord that I want to make sure that you know we're not just all talking over each other. Because sometimes mics be wild out here online. Not like Mike K and M R D. Especially mics. this Mike, I tell right, you, right, right. But microphones. <laughs> Speaking of Mike K and M R D, let's let's uh let's go through and say hi to our YouTubers since we got a a, a decent chunk of them here. And boy howdy, we got a, a wild ham radio for non techies in the house. What's going on, man? Haven't seen you in a little while. Yeah, it's been a little bit, man. Uh, I've been kind of busy. I've got some stuff going on. I had a friend down here for like a month. We were. We're talking about opening up a uh, cigar shop. Ooh, good so for you. So I've been uh, taking a lot of product photography and had to go get a whole bunch of camera equipment and kind of relearn the product photography world again. So <laughs> it was, it's been a, been a hell of a ride. But uh, yeah, I've been missing coming out of here, man. I've been kind of jonesing for my uh, my HRCC Saturday night fix. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you made it. You know, we, we, of course, missed you out here, but we knew you're up to fun stuff. So yeah, no big deal. We appreciate you coming back, though. Oh yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a blast. Yeah, I had a had a hog hunt. I went on uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, did my one mile shot. So that was pretty cool. But now I'm trying to get back in the ham radio thing again. So I put another show out yesterday, and I think I got some good responses from it. And uh, looking forward to making a whole lot more. Here, here's Just, a video idea for you. What is the best ham radio to take on a hog hunt? Yeah, <laughs> which everyone you don't mind dropping when they when they come That's right. After you. That's right. <laughs> that you could that you could potentially beat a hog off of you before it right. gores you uh, with a with a radio. So a Motorola basically is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, PRC no, we three twenty. We were uh, we were night hunting and we were going after hog and there's also a bobcat out there. There's mountain lions. I heard a rumor that there might be brown bears coming up from Mexico. We we're so far south, and uh, so pretty much we didn't know if we were hunting them or if they were hunting us. Did you get any armadillo? No. Got twenty five rabbits though. Oh wow! <laughs> Holy smokes! 
If you never, if you never shot at a rabbit through a thermal scope in the AR-15, it's a, it's a oh, I was gonna, thing. I was gonna ask you, what are you shooting at them with? Are you shooting them with a shotgun? But then you were talking about a boar hunt. I'm like, there's no way. They're okay. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah we had a we had quite a plethora of uh, hardware out there. A lot of our friends came out and brought all kinds of crazy stuff. But it was it was all around just a good time. We had a lot of ate a lot of food and just had a good time, just fellowship and talking and stuff like that. So, right on, right on. All right, uh, let's see. Really quick, Marcel Off Access FPV. Guys, if, if you didn't know this, my channel has a playlist right at the top that says, Are You New to Ham Radio? Start here. And it's not like a course you go one to N. You pull up the playlist and you scroll through it and you find something that's interesting to you and you watch it. And then that'll grow your knowledge in ham radio. That's my recommendation, how you approach that thing. All right, next down the list on the YouTuber's uh Scroll here. K6 ARK. Adam, what are you up to, man? You might be getting dinner right now. Oh, there he is. Trying, trying to get the mute button to work. <laughs> no, I had a kind of a long, uh, long work week and just uh, relaxing this weekend and getting caught up some on some stuff around the house. So kind of glad the uh, storm didn't turn into what they were forecasting for down here because i was a little bit worried about some some flooding in the workshop that happens when we get multiple inches of rain in a short time frame but uh all is well everything's dry and putting parts in baggies for kits so so yeah we had a massive flood on the last big storm that hit we had a uh a drain on the roof that got filled with you know filled with detritus from something who knows and so the water level filled up to a point where water found a way into the building and went through all the floors down to the basement it was really gnarly we were moving things like crazy but yeah yeah that's it it's not not fun getting water into all your stuff <laughs> so, no oh well particularly all your expensive racks right that are right underneath the water of course because that's that's how uh, Murphy's law works out. All right. So that's good for everybody. That's, uh, that's following K six ARK and his awesome antennas that, and, and not just antennas, all the kits that he's doing, you can go to case, uh, mention the website so people can follow you and I'll pull it up as well. Just K six ARK. What? Yeah. Just K six ARK.com. That's my website. That's got links to my stuff on Amazon, which is pretty much all sold out right now. But, uh, there are QRP male and female kits inbound, and I should have 100 watt kits inbound next week. So, so they should be back up in the relatively near future until those sell out again. <laughs> and, and the and the big one that um that a lot of people have been talking about is the mic kit. So for all of you guys that have the the USDX or the no, it's the USDX, right? What am I thinking of? Right. Yeah, the true true SDX, true SDX or the USDX, yeah. it'll work with all of them. The, the true that. SDX doesn't have like an external mic. You you can use the internal mic on the radio, which is not great, but it works fine. Uh, he made a kit, which is a really nice little inexpensive kit to to add a mic to that, and and you can basically wire it however you want. If you want to do it for a KX2 or KX3, you can do that. If you want to do true SDX or USDX, you can do that too. And it's a cool little uh, microphone kit for you guys. So keep an eye on k6ark.com. And there you go. Right on. So the other thing you'll find on there is a link to my printables page. And that that microphone uh, and all the items in the kit are listed on printables. So if you have a 3D printer and want to make your own, you can just make your own. And uh, to make just one of them, it'll cost you a bit more than buying the kit. But if you want to make three, four, five of them for yourself and your friends, uh, you could you could do so for for a, a cheaper price. There, it'll it'll cost you less to to make a batch of them if that's what you're interested in. It it might just be on my end, but I'm clicking the print your own button and it's not taking me anywhere. Oh, interesting. Well, if you just search my call sign on printables, that'll uh, that'll get you there. Okay. Yeah, he's got a bunch of prints that he makes available. So yeah, the the other thing you can do up yeah the menu at the top of the page there there's the three D prints and PCBs and that'll take you over that's got a link to printables so that one at least does work I'll fix the other. So let let's just uh, give a shout out to Adam here. Yes, he makes the kits available for those of you that don't want to go through the the process, but if you just want to print your own. He supports that, so that's a that's a real 
real cool ham radio operator right there. So even if you can print your own, maybe buy a kit or two for Adam uh, from Adam on Amazon. And your uh, I've gotten feedback on your wire winder from multiple people. They absolutely love your wire winder design. They think it is like exactly what we needed. So nicely done, Adam. Thank you. And, and to to kind of uh, emphasize that, um, I, I got some good feedback from the Soda Geeks on the Soda Slack group on wire winders. And uh, you can see my original one up in the top right corner there, the wireframe version anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one thing you'll notice about those two winders side by side is that the legs on the newer version are much less steep and have kind of a, a shallower angle, which makes the wire slide right off of that thing. Uh, and it, it's just much easier to deploy mm -hmm. and really not hardly any bigger, uh, but it still holds, you know, the, the 40 meter half wave wire. Indeed. All right. Very good. Well, thank you, Adam, for being out here. I appreciate you. All right. Moving on down to one Mike Kate MRD. How you doing, man? I am freaking exhausted. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, ex I don't expect to get any sympathy from anyone, and I'm comfortable with that. But I've been, uh, I spent the last two full days doing POTA. <laughs> and uh, I'm, uh, when I'm, I'm probably going to hop out of here in a minute and just go watch you. <laughs> so I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> I get it. I understand. So you've been, you've been radioactive all weekend, is what you said. Yeah. All, so, every day's a weekend for you, Mike, but, uh, You've been you've That's been out there. True. I I work, air quotes. Yeah. Well. Okay. Uh, sure. I didn't mean that uh, offensively. I meant that as like I am jealous <laughs> of your of your uh, of what you can do yeah. with your with your life right now. Uh, so I just want to quickly mention I actually heard you over in the UK, uh, Mike, but uh, evidently you couldn't hear me shouting back at you. Oh man, that's I was trying. I, I was trying to park to park you from the UK. Oh, dude, I would have loved that. <laughs> I I I actually just got England today uh, on ten meters. This morning. Oh, perfect. It was, it was amazing. I very, very rarely get England. I think I've probably gotten England three times. <clears throat> but, well, thanks for trying, though. Well, yeah, so one day. One day. Yeah, it'll happen. So, yesterday, so the, the Fairfield Lake State Park, I wanted to, I went out there Monday, made the video that I posted on Wednesday. That's the park that's closing down. And uh, I really wanted to get on the leaderboard. So I went back yesterday mm -hmm. and just sat in the car with the ATOS and made 354 contacts. And I don't know, I was probably there for four and a half hours or so. And uh, but it's an hour and a half drive there, hour and a half drive back. So it was it was it was a, it was a long day. Yeah. Um, Did, you know, that's I, that's like seven hours. <laughs> are you a full work day. Are you on the leaderboard now, though, for it? I, so I, I was aiming for number two because the number two slot only had like 460 con, uh, contacts. So I got, I'm total like 400 and I don't know, I'm a little over that. But some other guy did a, did a few activations there and didn't upload his logs. Yeah. So he's got like 700 contacts. So I'm oh. number three. I'm fine with that. I'm So long as I'm immortalized on there, I'm I'm good. Yeah, because you're like locked in at that point because you can't do anything yeah. about that at that. Exactly. Yeah. And then today, uh, Evan and I, uh, you know, Evan Barcheck, he's in the he's in the chats all the time. What's yeah. his what's his call? KG one uh ADP or something. I'll mm -hmm. never remember his call. And then Don RF Field Tech and another guy named David, we all went out to Huntsville State Park this morning and we uh we just had one radio and all four of us just passed the mic. Uh and so we'd all, you know, one person would work all four of us and we we all got over a hundred contacts today, so that took uh, probably about three hours. We might have left at like I don't know one o'clock or so, mm -hmm. and then Jason came back from Jason and Frank were at Fairfield today, and when Jason was coming back from Fairfield, he wanted to activate Huntsville, so I left Huntsville at like one thirty, came back at like two thirty or three, and then just hung out there for another couple hours, <clears throat> and. Uh, I just shaved my head today, so it's a little red. <laughs> I worked so, them on 10 meters today. Yeah, I know. Um, that's cool. Um, but then, so that was my day. But I have another question. Do you have your drops that you can do on the live stream, or is that just for the, for the uh, uh, podcast? Oh, like the audio drops? Yeah. I don't. I have, like, memes. I can do Hulk okay. Hogan. Well, then can you just say it? Let me spend your money. Let me spend your money. Okay, so I just got 
a Nano VNA. Okay. And I'm actually kind of liking it. I bought one years ago, and I hated it, and I gave it away. Oh, really? Bang, okay. B- Banggood sent me the VNA H4, and I'm like, hey, this thing's pretty cool. Ah. So now I'm like, do I need a tiny SA? Um, so I just dropped the link in the chat. <clears throat> so uh, yeah. I have I Absolutely. have one. I like so, them. I know so, that... Yeah. Uh, uh, who is it? Smoke and Ape hey. is not a fan. No. But... Again, yeah. it, it's a it's a it's a device this big. Spectrum analyzers are generally like you're talking a thousand dollars to even start talking about them. So the fact that you can pick one up for under a hundred dollars is is pretty insane. That's the one I'm looking yeah. at, but it's uh, that's what I have. It's, it's like eight. Hey. It's seventy five dollars with a fifteen dollar off coupon, so it's only like fifty one dollars. The yeah. one I drop in the chat is a little bit different than the one you're unless you're looking at the California tax version. Oh, I just clicked the link that you dropped. That's yeah. all. Oh, is that the link yeah. I dropped? Oh, interesting. Yeah, so T.O. I, T.O. does use them, and so does... I, I've seen Ape use them in some of his videos, too. So. I've been using them. He, ch- he used that MXP50 amp, and... Uh, or no, he was using his, his signalant, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, but he's used it for passing through. Uh, you know, he does the pass-through thing, which I'd I never... I mean, is it worth 50 bucks it. to be able to key up a radio that I'm reviewing and see if it's clean? I don't really put much into that stuff I, i'll be honest with you so kind of comment? uh go ahead comment hey micah love your channel um just a recommendation um they're yes i've been getting those from rnl now and i just got the ultra and had a little problem i sent it to them they sent me one right back no sweat no nothing it's just uh fantastic how they work with those and you'll definitely need um, the little goodies to go with that thing. You'll love it. It's great. I, I don't need the Ultra, though. That just goes to higher frequencies, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. We could pull More it More accurate, better built. Everything was upgraded by him when he uh, redesigned wow. that one. Better screen. Mm. Yeah, and uh, R&L, doesn't, money. R&L doesn't charge Texas state ta- sales tax either. Well, the one I'm looking at is like 50 bucks. That's uh, still still fifty bucks plus tax. No, it's on Amazon. I don't care. All right, so we're gonna pull up. Uh, which one is it on R and L? I found a yeah, tiny SA. Pretty... Tiny SA Ultra. Yeah, that's one hundred and thirty bucks, and it's out of stock. Son of a. <laughs> yeah 120 yeah 130 bucks okay so here, here's what i'll say about this and and you know mike take this with a grain of salt if you're doing like ht testing for like spurious emissions and whatnot you're gonna you're gonna have to throw an attenuator on the front of that thing anyway mm-hmm. to go into the sa which i have and I've, I've done these videos they are somewhat susceptible to uh background rfi like if you're in a in a noisy environment they are like affected. my house right right they are affected by that you will have to uh always calibrate the unit using the open short and through um with the with whatever line you're going to use all in in the mix that's just kind of like what you have to do when you use a a calibrated tool like that but it it gives you a good frame of reference right because it's it's not like testing a a vhf uhf antenna where you don't know where the ground plane is if you if you use that as the baseline and you test all of them against the baseline then you get a at least a, a a go no go kind of test out of it which for 50 bucks ain't bad from my point of view does the SA require oh, that point kind of cal- calibration? I thought. Oh so. no, the SA doesn't. The, the Nano no. VNA Oregon does. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I've you're already right. got the Nano VNA. I'm talking about the Spectrum Analyzer. Yeah, you're right. Like, you're right. That'd be a, I'm just okay, thinking that'd be a nice thing. You to might want to know. Hey, Go ahead, Mike. Uh, for the stuff you do and I do, I just uh, plug in the antenna and uh, I use it as my noise sniffer, my remote, everything. I mean. It'll scan the entire spectrum of transmitting things and noisemakers, and you don't even have to hook a line into it. Uh, that's another good point I didn't get to, is that you can use it as an RFI sniffer, if you didn't know that, Mike. Yeah, I know. I'm not so concerned about that. I literally just want to see, like, you know, how dirty radios are. Yeah. No, it's fine. It, it It's not going to be the most accurate tool in the arsenal and compared to like a proper bench SA, but it's like, no, I also, wouldn't expect it to be. Yeah, you're, you're going to spend like $1,500 for a decent one. 
So you no, know, I'm it, not. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. So it's like fifty bucks. Why not? Well, so it's like a Bofang is going to get you on the air, and it's a you know it's a halfway decent radio, right? And yeah, I would I would kind of That's, expect this to be I you know I I would I would know going into this that it's not this high precision instrument, right? But it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a it's like a my first Sony type of right. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Where it's, it's a, a sixty dollar laptop of of it, Spectrum it's, it's the Fisher Price of of essays. Yeah, is what you're rolling into, yeah. which there's nothing wrong with that. But Jim, it works well enough to absolutely. Jim and Abe yeah, do those videos all the time, but I mean, who really cares? Well, YouTube but, commenters care, but we, you know, th- that's like okay. they're going to comment on how crappy your there's, there's a, yeah, 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 is. Yeah, right. All right, exactly. Um, you guys know who W two A E W is? Uh, yeah, work for Textronics. He loves those things, and he's. Uh, I've learned everything from him over the years. Just fantastic resource, and he likes them. Oh, okay. There you well, go. Well, I'm sold. Buy now. Buy now. <laughs> it's all, Wait, it's also it's got a signal, signal generator. So beat beat the rush. Buy yeah. now. Yeah, Ape uses it for a signal generator. I don't think he uses it for a, a spectrum analyzer. Uh, because Mainly because he and Jim both are big scope heads. Yeah, but they've and, got the big Rigel. Yeah, exactly. Called, Siglent, I don't know. Well, and, but they don't pay $1,500 for him. Jim knows how to buy the or what what he needs and how to spec them. And he's yeah. got videos and videos on how you do that. But again, I I just, and T.O.'s the same way as me. I just can't be bothered. I don't, I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes the ape has some hot takes, which for him, you know, they work fine because he's a man mm-hmm. of impeccable standards. So I, I, I don't question that. But five for, gold medals. That's right. Five gold medals, man. You can't argue with that. <laughs> you can't argue with that. Uh, but at the same time, it's like it's it's fine for most people. It really is. Mm-hmm. Particularly if you're if you're just like uh if yeah. you're tinkering around, it, like this is one of those like if you have no frame of reference to what a spurious emission is, this mm-hmm. is opening the door to a whole new world of really interesting and fun kind of like deep dive that you can do in understanding electronics and radio. Yeah, they're they 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 have all these high standards, but then when I talk about an Apache Labs on and they don't they couldn't be bothered. Well, sure. <laughs> well, I just well, I mean, there there isn't there isn't one, another radio out there with adaptive free distortion, and that gets pretty rid of most of that stuff. I swear, I will have a reading... tiny SA tomorrow. I've already been playing, I've already been having the Nano VNA and using it for <laughs> like coax DB attenuation tests and stuff. So I figured out how to do that. Oh it's a yeah, thing to get into, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, so hopefully Stefano will uh, be happy with my tests moving forward because he suggested a nano VNA. <laughs> Got a suggestion for you, Mike. Now, yeah. uh, oh, I was gonna say. I uh, would... Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I got a couple of the uh, Precision uh, SMA cables from the used market off of uh, eBay, and. I just leave it connected all the time and calibrate with those uh, cables because uh, many, many people will tell you about breaking those SM- SMA connectors on the, the nanos, and you might as well throw them in the garbage according to the people that complain. I've never even gotten to the point where I would break uh, an SMA connector on any I'm of those devices. I'm not worried about that. Mike, I've soldered on SMA connectors. I'm not worried I have, about it. It sucks. Mike, I'll tell Man. you. I'll tell you right up front. You should go buy some attenuators for doing um, radio work if you're going to transmit. Well, interesting power. you mentioned that, Josh, because the attenuator on your store is sold out. The, womp, womp. the ideal solution for the uh, for that is actually a an RF sampling T. Oh you yeah, can, you can build your own. You're, it's not going to be quite as linear if you build your own. Um, but you can do, you can, if you look up RF sampling T, uh, that, that's the, really the tool you want. I made a, a variable one that goes from 30 to 60 dB of attenuation and it's, it's good enough. It's not super linear, but it's, it's good enough for, for what I use it for. Hey, that's I... cute that you assume that I'll be able to make something like this. Uh, hold you. on. I got one of those, Mike, here you go. This is the clean RF.com variable RF sampler. This is exactly what you want if you want to do that. They're, is, they're very simple devices, really. Um, that is the boy. Where from uh, construction. CleanRF.com. 
Very Can I send you an email for oh, there it is. Adam? They're also called ISO keys. But yeah, no, um, Adam and is what does that do? Correct. So it, it it allows you it allows you to kind of like tee off the the test device that you're going to connect, right? So it gives you the pass through from the radio to a load, if you will, like a dummy load or something like that. And then the T off, which is that BNC connector, is what you put into the test equipment. And then that little uh, dial there is basically your variable capacitor or whatever that allows you to attenuate the signal. Yeah, how do you know how much attenuation you're getting? You put in a test signal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is all over my head, guys. <laughs> I know yeah, literally nothing about, about this. So. Well, so then you can just buy an attenuator. <laughs> you just buy yeah, that, a buy a, a ten watt, uh, ten watt, ten dB probably uh, attenuator. Actually, wait, fifty dB. Hold on, hold on. I'll grab the one. Well, the guys are are using like thirty dBs of yeah, attenuator. So I just watched I just watched the Tech Minds video, and he was using a ten and a twenty attenuator. I think Ape is mm -hmm. using. I don't know what AC is. At least a 10. All right. Yeah, yeah about a 10 or a 20. T 10 watt, 40 dB is the one I use for handhelds. Okay. And uh, any of those work for legal limit? No, it's 10 watts. <laughs> it's 10 oh, watts. Too bad. I need, I, Come on. I need, it, it, it no, fits no, in no. the palm of my hand, man. Oh, okay. True. Well, the ones that work at legal limit do aren't that much bigger. but Oh, they um, absolutely are. Are you kidding? Power? Watts? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're huge. They're huge. No, I, I I've got to go buy one. They, they've got them in HRO. B they're about a little bit bigger than that. Yes, but you know why? Because I've got to run the back of the power out of my uh, uh, or split out the power out of the amplifier back into the radio. Now, why would you? Jim had a dummy load that they had an attenuator off. How many dBs yeah. does it attenuate though? Um, 75, 60 to 75 dB. Well, damn. Okay. I'm and curious. Then, how and that... then inside the radio, there's already a 10 dB uh, attenuator inside the radio. And I'll, again, this is all for adaptive pre-distortion because with, uh, you can feed an amplifier back into the Apache labs and it will attenuate or it'll, it'll use that output to attenuate or to uh, do the pre-distortion. Uh, for the amplifier so that you get uh, uh, adaptive pre-distortion from the amplifier rather than from the radio. All right. I have to wait until Monday to get it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, it says, it says so I'm looking at this BECEN 10-watt attenuator, DC to 3 gigahertz, 50 ohm RF connector. It says 1 to, 10, 1 to 40 dB, and then in parentheses, parentheses it says 15 dB. What is happening? I would trust those uh, cheap variable attenuators. It's not variable. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to look into this. Well, just shoot, just uh, shoot Ape a question and ask him which one he recommends. Yeah, that's that's a good call, Don. I picked up the uh, same dummy load with the RF tap that um, Jim uses. I posted that in the uh, feed. Yeah, yeah, that uh, oh, Jim and To both have that. I don't know where they got it. Yeah, I've got a dummy load. I ain't worried about that. The guy on Carlos. eBay that does a lot of reselling, SWL A five SWL. Oh, Thomas, uh, Thomas K. He was on the show what last week or so. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> but uh, I think he's K four SWL or yeah, that's Thomas. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll just I'll I'll text Ape and figure out. Yeah, did, but, yeah. I got uh, a three hundred watt dummy load for fifty bucks, and it's got a tap. Yeah, and Mike, the thing about that is, it's a dummy load that you're pushing your signal into, and then it has a tap that comes off of it. So that uh, that's what that's one of the things Jim uses. He uses that he transmits into the dummy load, and then pulls his signal off uh, off the uh, tap into his hmm. analyzers. I don't need Very a big, I don't need a big honking thing. I got enough crap in my shack already. Yeah, I want small. 
Well, All right. and I don't know where Jim got that either. He said he got it at a hand. Same guy. So who knows? Yeah. Hey, who has ever got the hot mic, you're going to get kicked if you're trying to uh, spam. Is that Rob? K9 hey, Rob. Mike, I posted that thing. It's no bigger than an HT, an old Motorola HT, but it's not big. I think it's the size of the freaking keyboard. <laughs> All right, hold Half on, hold the on. the size of the keyboard. Everybody pause for a second. Pause so I can take care of this noise where it's coming from. Uh, I got him, Josh. I got oh, him. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll DM him. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Like he's, uh, like he's on the, like he's uh, trying to do a DX contest and somebody's playing WAP. All right, sorry, go ahead. I, that's all I needed. You helped me spend my money, so thank you. All right. Well, the money. Has now been we're trying spent. to spend more. No, yeah, fifty bucks ain't bad. To be honest, for a tiny SA. It was. It was sixty six after oh, tax. Well, all right. So it was seventy five minus fifteen dollars, or seventy seven minus fifteen dollars plus tax. So whatever, sixty six bucks, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know how that math works out, but who knows who that? Whatever. How that math works yeah, out? It was crazy. I just bought it. Who, who even knows? So that's good. So. Hey, Mike. This thing is uh, three hundred watts, by the way. So. I'm selling my big ass HFC toaster of HF size toaster oven model. I have zero use for that. What? Are you sure, Mike? <laughs> I have what I have a dumb I don't first of all, <laughs> I don't have anything that'll put out three hundred watts. Second of all, I already yeah, have a dummy load that'll handle a lot. You never know what T Ray may lend you next, Mike. I have yeah, a dummy right? load that'll handle fifteen hundred watts. That little MFJ thing. Yeah, that's the one so, I got. Yeah, and it's yeah, adjustable. It's, it's adjustable, which is no, really cool. mine's not adjustable. It's just you plug it in, and it's just a big resistor. But yeah, I don't, I don't need any of that. I mean, give me an amplifier, and sure, I'll buy that. I'll buy that dummy load from you. <laughs> that's what that's what you need now, Mike. You got an amplifier. You don't have to climb over my body for that amplifier. I need that's it fine. too. That's fine. I can do that. I'm not worried about that. But no, I'm good. I just I just I want to test these cheap Chinese radios that companies send me. That's all. And just you know, I I don't have these test equipment things. So I just you know, I feel every ham needs to you have something watch like that. Food and I'm at the pair apart these guys, Mike. Say what? Dude so, went uh, after Ted Radio with this stuff. stuff. If you're ever at a... Whoa, hold on. It's just like a repeater. Wait, you know, give it a give it a moment. All right, so I think I saw Aiden. Was it Aiden? Go ahead. Yeah, so sorry for the delay. I'm actually on, like, a satellite internet connection, so it's, like, 900 ping. Um, uh, for To look out for like test equipment gear, honestly, if you're going to those ham fests, um, Motorola for several years made these um, kind of all-in-one testers for two-way radios that go yeah. all the way down, um, even mm. down to HF. And you can find them used at ham fests for only about 500 to 600 bucks. Uh, um, they have built-in 150-watt dummy loads um, and they, they do a bunch of great stuff. Um, if, if you're interested there, the most common model you'll find is a Motorola R6600. Yeah, they're called service monitors, and they're incredible. I have been looking for one for a very long time at a decent price. Down here in Southern California, they're all like $1,000. Yeah, I'm more at the $50 range, so I'm good. <laughs> but thank you. As long as you don't cook it, Mike, it'll serve you well, brother. I, I, I promise it, you, I'll send you mine bucks. if you it. So yeah, uh, my wife came in the chat to tell me that she was able to score the medication she needs. And then I have to wrap up the stream in an hour so that I can go drive to get her medication. She won't share it with me, but she has the antibiotics and the uh, codeine cough syrup she desires. So uh, apparently I'm going to... Oh, she's joined the after chat to keep me honest. I see her. She's right underneath me. Happy wife. Oh, I can have the cough syrup, she said. Okay, well, then now we're... Now I'm going to... Now then I'll be back on the live stream and, and it'll be a scissor live stream. <laughs> I'll be rolling the lean, guys. <laughs> it'll be the... Uh, it'll be the, the nine-hour... Uh, I'm told. Leave me to it. Styrofoam cup. 
Oh yeah, I'll, I'll bring my own styrofoam cup and I'll be running that scissor. Oh, uh, can I can I say real quick? Uh, I dropped a video this Thanks, week. Thanks, Christiana. Too. Appreciate it. Uh, was there a super chat? Did I miss it? What the, what just happened? It was on Twitch, maybe. Oh man, my Twitch thing's all screwed up. Let me pull that up. All right, kids. Thank you for your help. I'm go I'm going to uh, <laughs> retire for the evening. Have well, a good rest, Mike. You, sir, have deserved it. Please enjoy. Thank your, you. I worked your, very uh, hard. You did. Yeah, please enjoy the rest of your evening. I will Thanks. unfortunately Looking forward to your not, new videos uh, on that, Mike. I will. I will most likely not be joining you next week as it is the Houston Ham Fest. Mm. So we will be doing all things Ham Fest. Oh, when is that? Is that this weekend? Uh, that would be, it starts uh, next Friday and Saturday, yeah. Wow. Mm. Well, have fun. We will. Yeah. Uh, Jason's coming down. Yeah. Scott's coming out. We're going to do some barbecuing and drinking. And I'm not sure how we're going to barbecue with if there's a ham fest all day, but... I think we're gonna do some steaks. We're gonna probably go well, back the, to Scott's the, house and grow. Oh, there he is. Yeah. The, the Saturday ham fest it ends at like three o'clock because you know old people. So we'll have plenty of time to barbecue yeah. at the house, and we'll maybe we'll maybe we'll jump on a live stream and just do like, a live stream for the backyard or something. Oh yeah, you got a live stream. Yeah, there you go. Could do that. All right. Well, hail Satan. Until next time. Take it easy, Mike. Later. All right, so I got the Twitch thing sorted out. So anyway, if you send me a super chat or something along those lines, other than Christiana's there, thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you'd like to ping me, that's uh, that's acceptable too, and I apologize for not seeing it. The way it popped off, I don't know why it, it was all funky with the weird font, but hey, there you go. All right, uh, let's let's go back to the you know to to the beginning here, if you will. Uh, is there anybody in the chat now that we got people sorted out with PTTs? I got a couple of messages uh, on folks who are trying to get set up there. Anybody with a uh, first time on the Discord that would like to say hi or a ham radio question? And they'll just open it up to everybody. You don't have to be a first timer. Can, can I pitch my video? You can, but hold on. Let, let, let's see sure. if there's any, any takers, but we'll definitely get yours in there. So anybody here who has a ham radio question or just wants to say hi, go ahead. Uh, K4TXN coming in Discord the first time ever here in uh, Huntsville, Texas. Yeah, uh, all right. Time. We got yeah. you, bud. We got you. We hear you. Go for it, man. All right. Yeah, yeah. First time in. Uh, good being here for the first time. It's uh, new, to the, new to the Discord. Uh, doing everything in the mobile is actually awesome. I don't do much in the apartment at all. But, uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess I'm three. I'm stumbling over myself here. I got, just got my first glass of scotch going, so... Uh, have a good evening, everybody. K4 TXM. Hey, man, you made it in there. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. And hopefully we helped you out a little bit. So uh, 73 is to you, sir, man. To I like that. 73 is to you, sir, man. Wow. That's really good, Josh. That's a really good uh, salutation there. All right. Anybody else in there would like to say hi, first timers, or anybody with a ham radio question, go for it. Yeah, uh, I just recently picked up an FT101, uh, and I'm looking Ooh. at testing the tubes. Do I need a tube tester? Is there sort of a hack way to do that? Does anyone have somewhere they can point me? I am sure there's probably a hack. Uh, well, you got to put a you got to put a load on it, right? Hmm. And you should be more worried about the capacitors than you are the tubes. That is true. Well, I, I can test capacitors, but I don't know. How no, but to you test tubes. you need to warm them up. You don't want to just like throw power at it. You'll blow. Right. You want to slowly. You, you need a very yeah, act. yeah very accurate. Good suggestion for you. Suggestion for new timer with the one hundred and one. Yeah. I highly recommend you look up Mister Carlson's lab. He has a first timers, just got it on my bench, power up sequence, testing, everything you ever want to know about that old stuff. I I feel like I have not watched Mr. Carlson's lab in six months. YouTube stopped serving it up to me and I subscribed to him, mm -hmm. so I have to figure out what's going on with that. But Mr. Carlson's lab is a is uh a fantastic resource if you are into vintage radios. Uh amazing. Yeah, he's He's uh he's got a um he's got sort of an electronics course if you do his Patreon which is very cheap yeah and and you get some I extra do it. content that way too it's it's pretty snazzy hey there you go Jamscan just dropped it's bucks uh, a month that's what I pay for 
jo- that looks uh, nice. Modern tube tester using an Arduino. There you go. You can build one. Uh, looks like not too difficult to build uh, off of an Arduino based system. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. I have a pretty extensive modern electronics background. Oh, there you go. Uh, and seeing but when I when I see the tubes, I'm like, well, I I'm a transistor kid. So uh, well, seeing the test equipment's where I start getting confused. Uh, so looking at what I see here, that's a good start for me. Well, you know Arduino, so that's that's your uh, that's in your backyard already. You're you're all the way there. Yeah, that's why Carlson's so good. He does he goes over a lot of that old stuff that's just like just old knowledge that you. You don't run into. There you go. Right on. Good question. Now, I, I will say I am not a, a tube guy. The extensive tubes that I have are in my amplifier. And when I get when I get upset, I'm like, I'm just going to swap the tubes out. Let's see if that solves the problem. All right. Was there a comment? Go ahead, comment. I was just going to suggest, since my club is made up of basically everybody who's older than me, find an old timer that's been doing this for 50 years. They might have a, a sequence that they can go through as well. I've watched Mr. Carlson's lab. That's good stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, to have one of your old timers help you with that too. Yeah. You know, oddly enough, if, if you do have access to a good ham club, a good ham club, if you brought that in to a meeting, like an in-person meeting and set that up on the table and be like, I got this. Who can help me? I want to I want to get this on the air. A lot of them would look at it like, you know, uh refurbishing a like a muscle car. You know, like this would be a cool project. And they they could be, you know, like the the person that you could call if you got into a question you're like, I want to do this the right way. I want to redo the caps and I want to make sure everything's good before I get it on the air. Like what do I need to do? I bet you that you'd get a ton of people that would be willing to help you out. That'd be that'd be a sweet little project too. By the way, I would ask that you uh you go ahead and uh do a series of videos on refurbishing the radio, post it on YouTube so that you can help out people and explain your trials and tribulations that you went through. I think that would help people out a lot, particularly for that radio because there's a lot of people who look at it as both being like one of the first really important Yesu radios that was released and, and just an important amateur radio in general. So consider doing that. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, and thanks for all the advice from everyone. Um, I, I have a lot to look into now. <laughs> there you go. Cool. All Lots right. of parts out there on those uh, radios. And there's a shop in Chicago. Um, if you send me a a DM, I'll look up his address. He's got hundreds of those sitting on the shelves for scrap. Yeah, you know, okay, so here, here's an interesting, um, as, as, as a guy who grew up as kind of like a car guy, one of the reasons why my first car was a 1967 Mustang was because parts are available everywhere. You could get old vintage parts, you could get new old stock, you can get remanufacturers, all that stuff. In the term of like radio, if you wanted like a vintage radio, the FT one hundred and one is is, or is it FT one hundred? I could be wrong. Um, that's one hundred and one. One hundred and one. That's like a really good example of like a Ford Mustang, you know, sixties era car. There's a lot of parts available. There's a lot of people who have old parts that they stockpiled. And and you can still learn a lot because there's a lot of documentation online for it. So uh, that's that's a good platform if you wanted to get into like boat anchors and stuff like that or vintage radios. You could start there and you could you could have a pretty good time. That that's precisely why I picked it up. Yeah, good for uh, you. Because you can you know, all the boards pretty much come out and they're easy to test and everything, and it's very open and exposed and easy to work on. Not my 101D. No, not your 101D. No, that's that's what I find funny when you say 101. They they have the old 101s which are great radios and exactly what you talk about and then they have the the 101D which is a which actually is a callback to the the original 101s but 
yeah, the, those those I would not open up and even begin to try to work on them. So uh, interestingly enough, that's um, so the new 101, the 101Ds, right? Mm -hmm. Or the 101M, I guess. Um, D. That, well, they have two MP. models, though. MP, MP. 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 So that radio is literally a callback to the 101. And mm -hmm. so Yesu, to put the the same call sign, if you will, on that radio, means they're putting a whole lot behind it uh, in that it is a important radio in their lineup of radios. So that that says a lot for the company, you know, giving it the uh, the thumbs up. Yeah, and I'm setting off the fire alarm. Apparently. I just saw that. Excellent. Gotta love that. 40 meters is such a pain for me at, at, how, at the house. Mm -hmm. Gotta love the FT8. So I dialed back the power. So if you were trying to make a contact with me. Were you running power tonight on SSB? No. That was yeah, uh, yeah. boy, you were strong in well, Texas. But but see that's the difference between 40 meters dipole like I'm running right, right now right. versus on a beam. The, yeah, but just think what you'd run what you'd get when you run power on oh, a beam. Oh, dude, I kill it. Like so mm -hmm. the the 40 meter dipole and the 30 meter dipole on the step IR is fine. It's it's not great because it's folded. It's a folded dipole. So you get some weird complexities in the antenna when it, when it's on the air. And it's not nearly as high as it needs to be. But on 20 meters, it's at like the perfect height. It's it's fine. No, not perfect. I, I, I could do with an extra 20 feet or so. But I swear, when I tune that thing up on 10 meters, I kill it. I slay. And if I turn the amp on, I'm nobody's touching me. It, it's It's that good. This antenna is fantastic. I I cannot say enough about this antenna. In fact, there's another video coming on this antenna. Is my uh, my after my post COVID antenna review of the uh, Step IR now that I've had it a couple of years. Nice. You were you were a good five six into Northern New York tonight, Josh. Oh yeah, no, it gets out when it's on the beam when it's twenty and lower, or twenty and higher, I should say, higher frequency. It it uh it it just kills on ten meters. This antenna is just awesome. It's great. And that is what a three element or a two element. Three element. Three element. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I almost went with the two element, and I was like, on my lot, the the step IR guys knew exactly what they're what they were doing. I'm like, yeah, listen, yeah. listen, I got a hex beam. And I wanna, I want, you know, I want some better performance out of it. And I'm thinking about the urban beam, blah blah blah, you know, all that stuff. He's, and they're like, yeah, you know, the no, the urban beams, it would, it would probably be a little bit better performing for you. But if you think about it, an urban beam is really just a hex beam when you get down to it. It's, it's about mm. six dB gain. It's a two element yaggy kind of thing. He's like, have you thought about the three element? That'll be a big step up for you. And I was like, ah, you son of a bitch, you got me. <laughs> And that's really what it was. It was them saying that the urban beam doesn't really add much gain. It just mm -hmm. uh, it, it it functions very much like a like a two element Yagi. So it's kind of like a hex beam, um, which is good. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. But if you add that third element, don't say that. Mommy's still listening. huh? You add Please and don't say that word. Mommy's still listening. What what word? What word? I didn't say a bad word. Close the door. Oh my god, my kids are auditing the live stream. <laughs> uh, the uh, the the third element really does add something. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess so. Here, here's the really fun thing. If you uh, if if you go to the fifth element, then then you really have something because then that's when you uh, you can do like you know Lilu Dallas multi pass with your antenna. The Is that the eight thousand dollar? Uh, step IR. Yeah, I think they only do like four elements, but uh, oh, okay. yeah, the fifth element was kind of a joke. But you know, yeah, I've seen a, I've seen a couple of those driving around here in Texas, the the, the big ones, and yeah, I just jam scan. Are you kidding I'm never me? gonna have one of those. What, Christiana? Thank you so much for the super chat. You don't get the you don't get the multi pass joke. That was a joke, man. Don't make me explain the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I won't explain the joke. If you don't understand the joke, then I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that 
that's why I get I get so frustrated with those guys in uh, trying trying to get over those guys in uh, the East Coast getting into Europe because even on ten meters they're running uh, a kilowatt or more into you know a, a six or seven element beam pointed mm-hmm. right at Europe and it's like no I'm not going to beat those guys and then if you don't if you're not working them then the guys in Europe are going six and seven calls only six and seven calls only it's like well okay what so chance let, do I have <laughs> let's talk about that for a second so yeah. you heard on the live stream where it was just a cacophony of noise on that pile up no I, because I was in it so I didn't get I, didn't I was barely I was barely picking one letter or a number out of that entire group. Mm-hmm. And then Rob comes in with just the smashing signal, just mm-hmm. absolutely obliterated everybody. And so when people say like ham radio is sometimes pay to win, it kind of is sometimes. It is. It is. It, it, it kind of is. is. It's, it's not to say that like it, in my case, we had a limited time. Right. That I was running the I was running contacts on. But if I was there for multiple hours, yes, you with a lower powered station would eventually get in there. But Rob with the with the quad stacked Yaggies just blew in with no Mm. problem. And it's like, wow, okay. like he, he was he was as audible as he comes in over discord. That's how good his audio quality was. Insane from Maine. From Maine to mm-hmm. Southern California, that's like, th- like the bookends of the country, from the the due northeast to the due southwest. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, and that that main station is what four over four over four too. It's not just a single Yagi. It's it's a, yep. It's a quad stack. Yeah, it's a quad stack, and so yeah, that's going to just blow away. I mean, it, can you imagine quad stacking? Uh, Step IRs. Oh my yeah. god. That, that QSA cost me about six dollars, but totally worth it. Yeah. I was gonna say it's probably like two hundred DB gain. <laughs> yeah, the only the only problem I have with, with a, the uh the ham radio uh remote thing is that you you have to pay by the month whether you use it or not. And I I'm not I, I don't see the point I, I really don't want to pay uh well for those those stations anyway you, you know can, what uh, they, they do do it by the month so you can pay for a month and then not pay for the rest of the year that's i i use it sporadically and i i pay the one month subscription use it for a bit and then might not use it for three or four months and that that entire one month cost is about six dollars for that or did you pay six dollars plus the one month it's twenty dollars for the month subscription then you pay airtime so yeah you're right it is it is expensive but uh for me you know it's it's an occasional vice where i jump on and it gives me an excuse to exercise my my american call sign so right right here's what i would do if i had a super station that i was gonna do a uh remote ham radio thing rollover minutes that's what i would do yeah and he doesn't. He doesn't do that. But I mean, it's it's his thing. No, it, I'm joking. You remember, you remember like cell phone companies are like, oh yeah, no, the the minutes are really expensive. And then Singular hits the market, and they're like rollover minutes. How's that sound? I you still keep have whatever. Rollover. Hell yeah, dude! Rollover minutes were the jam. Mm-hmm. Do that with uh with amateur radio, and you'd be like, you'd be killing it out there. Yeah, I have a two gig plan, but I have rollover, so uh, it. It works out. I get about four gig a month, which is more than I need. But uh, I'm paying a hell of a lot less than those unlimited plans. Anyway, I'm not. That's... Oh, you got a legacy account? Are you T-Mobile? No, I'm at AT and T. AT and T did rollover minutes. Yeah, the, uh, mine still does. <laughs> Holy smokes! Hey, I was on singular. data. On it's data. It's not out, uh, singular. I was old school singular. Yeah, that old school yeah, singular yeah. became T Mobile in the States. That's where I. No, I got, it became I, AT&T. I no, it was AT&T. Singular came, became AT&T. Oh, I'm singular. you're right. I am a, yeah, I am yeah, a singular right. customer. I originally had. I was singular. too. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm AT&T. I've never, I've never left. I probably had this cell account for 20, well, pro- over Holy 20 smokes. years. That's awesome. Yep. 
back to the isn't there isn't there a way that you can make a super station and then sell your time back if you don't if you're not using it um there is or something like there is a one that does that but there a lot of those guys that do it um don't allow you on their stations uh, like when it, when i've looked and i, I think that's ca- that's called remote ham radio which is com- which is different than uh rhr there's two different companies basically i'm is what i'm trying to say that do that and one of them does allow you to put your station on there and then control when your station is available and right. i don't think rhr does that uh, well, I mean, if you want to use your station for like a contest, like you can just tell people not today. You can on the other service. I'm not sure whether uh, Ray allows that. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I know. Uh, I think even if you put one on there, he he he's more strict with the way you can put a station on his thing. But the other company is more. It's it's more. It's your equipment. And you decide when you're going to allow people to pay to use it. Oh, Jeff out here rocking the. Uh... Uh oh, Leia is very upset. Uh oh, <laughs> got... are you are you over your fifty three minutes? <coughs> Leia is very upset. Leia, would you like to hop in the live stream and uh and tell everybody what just happened to your situation? So I, I told her, I'm like, uh, CVS has got to be like pretty much closed at this point. It's almost 8 o'clock. And she's like, no, 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 they close at like 10. And I'm like, uh, okay, I'll go pick up your pills. And then I text her, I'm like, when does the pharmacy close? And she's like, I just called and it's closed. Do your stupid stream. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so we're good, boys. Uh, we're off the hook. You're on the screen. I know where Josh is sleeping tonight. I, I, wait, 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 let me, let me first say she went and got all these really fantastic prescriptions and I'm assuming she would share with me, although that's probably not what you're supposed to do, but it's okay. No. Um, but she wanted me to go get them. I told her, I'm like, just go. The kids can, you know, if there's a problem, they'll run into the, the shack area. It's not a problem. I'm here. And she's like, no, I want you to go get them. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, we're going to have to wrap up the stream here in a little bit. And she's like, and that's why she was giving me the countdown, the T minus 39 minutes Mm -hmm. and all that stuff you saw, because that's when, and then she says it's raining. I I have no sympathy for people who can't drive in the rain. I I have none. I, I prefer to drive in the rain. I love it. out of Florida then. No, I love driving in the rain. I love it. Mm -hmm. Do you know why I love it? It feels like I'm in, like I'm driving in my vehicle, and my vehicle is that little sofa fort I made as a kid. And yes. I'm cozy, and I'm in my little protected bubble, and I'm just driving. And it's a little bit of zen, and there's the, the rain pitter-patter on the on the windshield and the body of the car. I oh I love I love driving I, in the rain I love it I, I don't care how strong the rain is I love it I'm I'm sorry but that's the way I feel when I pota and I take my van out and hell I yeah sit in the van hell yeah and I run pota that's even in the heat so heat sure. rain cold you're in your little environment you mm-hmm. have your little heater I love it everything is here and you're sitting in the park and you're making contest oh dude uh don you and i are are kindred spirits in that sense i completely love the way you operate i have mm. no problem with i like i like deploying radios in the park i absolutely do but i also mm-hmm. like just a nice little enclosed bubble a little fbi surveillance van that we put in the, park, in the parking yeah. lot and get on the air well I, I'm, I'm totally loving, down totally down i love going out with a bunch of guys and doing and, sure. and setting up in the park yeah, absolutely but i don't like going by myself and deploying on a park bench because I don't know. I'm busy working radio. I don't. I'm not paying attention to what's going on around me. And it. it, it I'm sorry. I'm afraid. I, let's just put it that way. Don, Don, you're going to be the guy that all the moms in the park are looking at. Like, who's that weird dude? <laughs> I don't care. No, and you're you're absolutely right. I there are people that have pointed at me while, I, and I, I just I don't care. <laughs> when you're in, when I'm in the yeah. car. 
when I'm sitting at a park bench, I don't like all of the people that are walking around in the park because I don't know who they are and I don't know what their intentions are. That that's like the, the well, it's duality. Like, it's like Josh. Yeah, go ahead. It's go like ahead. Josh when he got the the sheriff's called on him at the, his local park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's the duality of my mind. Like I both want to simultaneously be in the like in in the public, so people come up and ask me questions. I love that, but at the same time. I like the comfort of just activating inside your car and just being yeah. done with it and moving on. And then like, we're done. We're all good. Like that's like, I love that. I, I love that there are two and it's okay. It could be a, it could be a public day and it could be a quiet in your van day. There's nothing wrong with that. And that mm -hmm. quiet in your van day could be every one of your days. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, and you know, I've, I've talked about this before, but I'm setting my van up to be like a little mini camper. I've been watching all those videos, videos about taking a minivan and making it into a stealth camper. And I've got, I bought a lot of the stuff already for the cot and everything like that. The one thing I'm missing is an air conditioner, but uh, that'll come. But I've got all of that done. And, and eventually, because I really think honestly that I'm going to uh, walk away from the job at the end of this year and find and retire. And when I do, man, that's what I want to do. I just, I, I want to take day trips or weekend trips or, uh, week, week long trips, depending on what I can do with the cats. And, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to rent a hotel room, uh, go to a state park somewhere in Arkansas or wherever and, uh, sleep overnight and work radio out of the van. I like it. I was trying to put a good uh, jib Late shift traction control, and mm -hmm. the only thing is, like, with a Civic. Yeah, trying to what? respond to my wife about the truck. It, I'm not going to crash the truck in the rain. It's got four motors, and it's a big computer. It's not crashing anything in rain. It don't care about rain. No, gosh. I mean, what would she do living in Texas and driving on ice? Because I'm telling you, you don't you don't get out on ice. Everything else I'll drive in, but ice, no. No, ice is different. I'm not talking about ice, but like in the ice. light rain that we get, I got my kids in the truck, drove it out into the, you know, the main drag, and I just floored it. And the truck don't care. It put all five hundred horsepower to the ground and just started cooking. And it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's it's got traction control. We're good. There you I, go. I, I think this is pretty neat because of the way that I've got my name in Discord and the name that I've got on YouTube. Whenever somebody hits me on Discord and YouTube, it still highlights me. <laughs> Thank you, TC Fitz, for all the super chats. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for that. I've uh, got him. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. We'd love to take a question. Otherwise, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start unboxing this new Moby linked. We haven't tapped into that yet. Mm. Go for it. Yeah, uh, I've got a question about uh, mobile radios. I'm looking at doing one soon, and I settled on the 9800 until um, I learned that it does not do single sideband, uh, which covers my tech HF privileges, right. and then I kind of settled on the 7800 but it looks like that's no longer available anywhere mm -hmm. and by two-way radios has a message saying that it doesn't meet um requirements anymore so i'm kind of confused on that um any suggestions from anyone boy that's a, a very good question but also a loaded question so it sounds like you want VH, VHF and UHF capability, but also HF capability. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Um, and I was thinking mobile for the HF um, because I was planning to, until I get something for the house as well, to kind of transport back and forth um, until I do something better. Mm -hmm. um, I did settle for an HT um, upgrade on the UV90 Mate, um, which would give me the airband, which I'm also interested in. Um, so trying to use the both of those to give me a little bit of everything that's piquing my interest at the moment. 
new or used. So here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. My, my opinion. This is my opinion. I am generally not an advocate of an all-in-one radio. And, and by the way, there's not a lot of them that exist on the market right now. I like a, a good VHF, UHF radio in, in, your, in your car. Was, Ryan, can you mute right now? K4TXN, if you can. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I like a good VHF, UHF radio in your car. So that could be you, – you could go inexpensive with this. You just need analog. If you just want to do analog, that's fine. You can go with an ICOM 2730, which is what I, I use that in my shack. That's my primary radio. If you want to do digital modes, then that's a whole, you know, different bunch of radios. Or if you want APRS, that's a different set too. When it comes to HF though, so in that case, the the most I don't know, the 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 radio that most people are going to that that is a mobile platform but highly portable 100 watt HF is the Yesu FT891. That's what most people are going to these days. It is easy to take in a backpack. It is easy to separate the body from the head unit and, and mount it in a car really, really seamlessly. A very popular radio for that for that kind of setup. Here, there's another question, Josh, whether or not uh, does he want to do sideband on VHF? Uh, okay. Because if he does, then that's then then you're 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 narrowing it down even more. You're looking at like a 991A or 897 or yeah, or sorry, sorry 857 8, 8, 8, 7100 yeah. 7100 yeah. Well, and, and define define mobile because you know when I was first got into ham radio, people were mounting you know Kenwood TS 430s in their in their in their vehicles. Jeff. So how much space do you have jeff let the oh. man talk let the man talk <laughs> um so for me right now i am um really just talking on um local repeaters um and so that covers my vhf uhf requirements um and i have no issue having something separate uh for the hf um and i don't think i said that i have uh, technician privileges now um, and so I know the next uh, step would be to uh, upgrade my license um, but I'm just kind of enjoying what I'm doing at the moment until I um, do um, get the general um, and so if I could have something different um, for my current HF privileges I'm completely fine with that as well um, but just trying to see where I can combine and where it needs to be separate. So I think you kind of answered that part uh, for me, Josh. Um, and with that in mind, um, another radio that I was looking at and actually was talking to someone today on the local repeater about was the Anytone 778. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, the only downside to that is um, that it doesn't have a mountable um, head yep. um, because I'm thinking that yep. I'll probably want that separate um, just for being able to have things nightly tucked away. Yeah, no, you, you nailed it. it. It's a good radio, but it, it doesn't have a removable head unit, which makes it kind of difficult to work with. So this is one of those things. So if, if I could, um, there's a lot of people... I, I, I find myself falling into this camp as well, where I just tell you, like, get your general as fast as possible. Get on HF as fast as possible, which I think is I think is generally the right answer. But there's a lot of fun stuff you can do as a technician. So here is what I would say is figure out locally what type of repeaters you have in your area. If they're all analog then, yeah, go with the ICOM 2730. It's a fantastic radio. It's all analog. It's very simple to use. But if you find out, like, Yesu System Fusion is the big repeater in your area, well, okay, cool. Uh, also, you can do APRS. You can get something like the, the Yesu FTM 300 or FTM 200. There's all kinds of complexities in that radio that you can deep dive all the interesting things that it does. 
And that's super fulfilling and will be really interesting until you do decide to upgrade upgrade to general. But I would advocate to explore the space, this technician, this technician space that you have with your with your license, um, and and have some fun with it. But I would caution or caveat caveat the whole thing with do check to make sure that you do have good repeaters in your area for the different digital modes. Otherwise, APRS is always fun, but APRS is also completely contingent on the number of digipeters you have around you. Down in Southern California, I have everything, so I can do whatever I want, and it'll always be cool. But where you live, it could be totally different. Yeah, we have um, the analog repeaters, of course, and um, some of them are linked uh, with Echolink and um, on the Georgia Conference. Uh, and other than that, um, I believe DMR is the other ones we have. We don't really have the ASU, well, we don't have any ASU fusions here. Okay. That's too bad. Eh. Uh, uh, sorry, where are you located again? I am in uh, Savannah, Georgia area. Do you, do you know what APRS is like in Savannah? I guess we could look this up. I don't even have to ask. We could just pull this up. Um, um, Kenneth, KM2Q on here. He's, he's vaguely in that area, if you want to ask him. Well, I mean, we can just pull up APRS.fi and just go to Savannah. Wait. I can use the maps. Wow. Here we go. Oh, look. Oh, my God. So many of the maps. And I guess the other thing um, for me, too, is that I haven't looked really into a lot of the digital um, because I know there is a lot more that I still haven't even explored Holy just on the RF side of things. Where the hell? Where is uh, Savannah? Is it north or south Georgia? South. South? It's on the border between Georgia and South Carolina. Georgia's already on the... It's on the what coast. It's on the water. It's on the right. Holy right smokes. Oh, my God. My screen is lagging. Coast. Oh, my God. George, George, then it's not on the south if it's bordering... Uh, okay. I guess in that okay, you're right. In the sense that it is in the south, the dirty south, but bordering the northern border of South Carolina. Yes, okay, correct. It's it's in Look the duddy. Uh, we are officially in the duddy south, folks. We're in the duddy south. Here we go. The duddy south of APRS. One of the well, at least it was before the pandemic, largest uh, St. Pat's celebrations. Anywhere in the U.S. Did you make uh, Rivers really... Green? Did you make Rivers Green, sir? I did not, um, but that is a very fun thing to do for some people. All right, so straight up, this is not a great APRS showing in Savannah. So I would not necessarily tell you like uh, to get into into APRS. With that said, let, let's flip this around a little bit. Let's do WinLink node. All right, here we go. We're, we're diving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you definitely can pull the dreams and put up, a, put up a digi. If you build it, they will come. Oh, you got no nodes out here either. Holy smokes. Uh, let's see. I want. Oh, this isn't good. There's not a lot of windlink nodes either. Hmm. I'm going to go uh, back to my original comment on, you know, analog, VHF, UHF. Get a, oh, you're, uh, you're, you got it set to Pactor. Uh, where? 
Oh, you're right. You're right. Oh, okay. 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 Good. Thank you. God, it was all mixed up in there. I good catch. Good day, catch, bud. Thinking. Good catch. Thank you. Uh, not much of a not much of a better situation. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but yes, so Brunswick would be the closest one, which is probably what is that like 100 miles, 150? I don't know. In East Coast miles, I don't know what that looks like to to someone on the West Coast. Uh, um, it's about 45 minutes away. As far as how many miles, I'm not sure. Um, I, that that is a very East Coast answer to my question about how many miles it is. <laughs> And of course, it also depends upon who's driving, um, and I'll just leave that there. You guys well, it's are on the coast, me. so at least it's below the fall line. It should be pretty flattish. I love it when I, <clears throat> I love it when I talk to people on the East Coast. I'm like, "How far is that away?" They're like, "I don't know. It takes me like four hours." Like, no, how like distance in miles or whatever like no no no. you can't you can't do distance in miles it's about time and i i get it like when you start crossing between different states sure i get it but like i i just want to know straight mileage but uh, i i get it i get what you're saying 45 minutes so that's under 100 miles i'm guessing it's under 100 miles yeah el paso is more than 11 hours from here no right right when you talk to a texan uh, they will give you time. See, that's mm -hmm. that's the that's a tricky thing. East Coast time in traveling north south, one hundred percent different than a Texan traveling across Texas. They mm -hmm. will cover way more miles than you could ever try to cover north south on the East Coast. There yeah, is... we kind of we kind of have a joke down here where we say Houston is an hour away from Houston. Yeah. Yep. And it's yeah. Yeah, that's true. true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you guys are gonna kill me. Oh my god. <laughs> so, um, with all of this being said, it I guess I'm kind of going back now to the whole deal with the uh, seventy eight hundred, the TYT. Mm -hmm. Is that still available, or is it not? Um, because um, I'm kind of confused, and where I do see it available, it is a completely different price point than. I I don't know that I would bother with this uh, with the TYT seventy eight hundred. Uh, I know that you mentioned the ninety eight hundred earlier, and that's a radio that's been out for a while. And yeah, you're 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 right in the sense that it doesn't do single sideband, so you can't do like uh ten meters or six meters with it. But it still does FM, so you could do FM repeaters, although you can't as a technician. I get that. Um, th the point, though, is it's a fine dual band radio. It's fine VHF, UHF. So if you if you just want to go down this road of like exploring the VHF, UHF space, it's a fine radio. I, I've been using one for five plus years in my Xterra. It's worked great. It only recently is it is it developed a problem, but that's after five years of being buried in the uh, underneath the dash and up underneath uh, the climate control system. So you know, pretty good. I would I would say. Okay, cool. Um, this helps a lot. Thanks. Yeah, uh, I I would I would recommend you check out the twenty seven thirty if you if you want to do analog and explore that space before completely diving into HF. By the way, I, I totally recommend you do dive into HF. And if you want to set up a mobile radio setup for doing HF in your car or HF at home, absolutely come back and talk to us more about that. But um, yeah, I, I would uh, I would say check out the 2730. It's a good radio. It's really easy to use. So there you go. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. So the... Uh, the chains of obligation have been dropped from me, so I'm going to hang out for a little bit longer. I am going to run to the restroom mm -hmm. really quickly, uh, and I will be right back. So if anybody wants to ask a question while I'm gone, that's okay. There's plenty of people in the room that will be able to respond. I will start my FT8, so hopefully I make a contact while I go to the restroom. I don't think we're supposed to say that, but I will be right back. No. Nope. <laughs> comment to the gentleman from uh, Savannah. 
Hello, my name is Ron Jacobson. I'm an FCC um, employee, and I just want to let you know you are now losing your license. Wow. Not funny. But Rob's in the UK. Not Rob. Yeah, okay, back, back to the gentleman from Savannah. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Um, um, my solution to the problem after I got my general, of course, but it's the same solution to the same thing. Uh, if you can get an IC706 and it gives you the UHF, VHF, and 160 to 6 in the HF, but you can do single sideband on 10 meters as a part of that, but you're going to have to find a used radio that's I've got the Mark Two G specifically, and you'll you'll wind up having to. I just want to note that only the Mark Two G does two and seventy. The Mark One and the Mark Two only do two meters. And and that's why I would recommend the Mark Two G. And yes, they are kind of pricey. Um, I I got the right one at the right time from a, a ham club member that was wanting to get rid of it. So. Yeah, the, 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 the other ones to look at. I mean, if you get a shack in a box like that, there's the the various versions of the seven hundred six, the Icom seven thousand. Mm -hmm. um, if you can find one used at a good price, you can get the Icom seventy one hundred. There's the Yasu eight. Uh, was it the eight eight five seven eight fifty seven D? Yeah, and then the eight ninety seven. 897, yeah. Um, there's a few other radios like that. Yeah, the R&L has some used 7,000s. I think there were, yeah, there was a 7,100 on there today. Uh, there was uh, a, a an 897, which I haven't seen ever. And R&L, by the way, when you go to their used section, you can, and they had several Mark II GSs or G's, I think, sorry. And um, anyway, uh, when you go on r &L's website and you click on their used one, they'll usually have a picture of the radio. And then down below it, they will list out band by band what they tested it at so that you know what you're getting. And then you have a certain like 10 or 15 days uh, to uh, try the radio out and, you know, send it back if you, you know, don't if it doesn't work i don't think you can just send it back because you don't oh, like hold it. on don yeah uh whatever you do don't buy any of those used rnl radios they'll all I blow bought, up on you matter of fact i, I don't have even bought look i have at bought them. Ten, i bought several of them my 850 no don they're all new. junk don't uh, help i i have bought RNL them and buy our radios i'm waiting to get that mark free don't tell oh, anybody there's several of them oh, there's oh, are you I gonna see buy what, them? i see what he's doing i, I, I see it. what he's doing i you see what he's doing come on i get come it, I get on. it. Sorry. i fell for it pay, pay no attention to that used 897 they have listed <laughs> on their website right? yeah um, yeah, we see you. absolutely blow up in the mail. It'll blow up in the mail. Craig, Craig, but, you're a funny guy. That was a funny. That way, was a funny thing you did there, Craig. <laughs> by the way, on I dropped a, a link from RNL. RNL has that uh, Alpha Delta part. I look at the link. I can't remember the number right now, but um, that is perfect for building a fan dipole. The the loot or the the screws that come out of it are very very deep, and so you can put a lot of individual wires on there, and build a very uh it, it's very easy to build a fan dipole. I highly recommend that, and they're normally about thirty five thirty six dollars. Today only though. Yeah. So um, I I will say. When it comes to retailers, RNL is an interesting one because they do some quirky stuff that none of the other retailers will do. They they will uh, they'll drop prices, they'll do these weird little deals and stuff like that. It it's like totally a mom and pop like mm -hmm. shop that they're running, and it's super cool. Some of the stuff they do is just yeah. wild. Well, MTC's like that too, but yeah, sure. the thing I the thing I like about them is they bench test all their radios, uh, their used radios, and then they put the results band by band 
on there and they put pictures of the radio you're going to buy on the on the website. And I I have not seen anybody else do that. HRO, whatever you walk, you go into HRO and it's like, well, here's the radio. Now they'll deal with you. I mean, the guys there, are like I went in to buy a radio. I was just going to pay like what they had on the deal. And he goes, well, I'll take 150 off of that if you want. I was like, sure. <laughs> so, I mean, you like should call them. you didn't even ask. Them. They're like, yeah. No, just, I didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they will do that. That is true. That is true. Yeah. yeah. So, um, even I believe if, with RNL, cause what I've done with RNL is I just click the button and buy it. And I believe if you called them and said you wanted it, they probably would do the same thing. They take some, take some money off of it. Yeah. So yeah, unbelievable <laughs> customer service in this day and age. Mm-hmm. And I just call them now when I want something and they tell me I'm either probably not going to like it or give me a deal. Just oh. exceptional people. Let, let, let me tell you what happened to me this week, and I'm sorry for the story, but no, go ahead. Uh, I was going to go ahead and get a Roan H30, and RNL has two of them. And I called him up, and I said, look, I want the Roan H30, but um, it says on the website that I should call you guys and ask for a quote on the shipping. And he goes, oh, yeah, the freight, uh, we have to ship it freight. The, no, no UPS, et cetera, none of those will take it. And he said, you're not going to like what I have to quote you. Yeah. I said, oh, okay. Because the, the, the poll is $114. Yeah, it's, it's and, cheap when you think about it. It's cheap. Yeah, but then the shipping on it was $575. I was like, whoa. I said, Don. no. <laughs> you're going to hate me, Don. You're going to hate yeah. me. Yeah, that's part of it. Oh, my God. No, so you, I, I, go I, ordered, I ordered that Roan 50-foot mast. And mm-hmm. the HRO is like, oh, yeah, freight shipping applies. And I was like, holy crap. So this was in Janet was still working at the HRO. So I called up Janet, and I was like, mm. hey, Janet, what does that mean, like shipping freight, blah, blah, blah? She's like, well, if you can't drive to the to the company that we get them from, we have to ship it. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, where where is the company that you ship from? And she's like, oh, it's about a mile from your house. <laughs> So I literally just drove a mile up the street. The company's right there. They brought it out to me, hand delivered, and I put it on top of my truck and drove it back to the house. Okay. If you don't want me to ask, just just a second. Another story, real quick. Yeah. Uh, So instead of that, I called HRO here and asked them about it, and you know, just to double check. And Robert told me, "Well, wait a minute. Why are you not going to Texas Towers? Texas Towers is like a block from HRO." And all they do now is sell towers. But believe it or not, that is the first the first HF radio I ever bought was from Texas Towers. And I do not know how I didn't think about them. I called them up. Sure, we have it. Here's it's one hundred and twenty six dollars. And yeah, sure. Just drive over here and pick it up. So that's what I'll do on Monday. There you go. Yeah. Are you talking about Texas Towers selling radios? Yeah, they did back uh, in 1991 when I bought my oh, okay. first radio. I was about to say because I'm looking at the site and I only saw like towers and like like a like large yeah. like yeah yeah they do that now. Um, they only t- sell towers and a lot of their business now is um, commercial. And when I bought them uh, or when I when I called them, you know, I told them about that. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you were buying when Gerald was still here. Gerald's the guy that originally opened it up. And I think he's long since silent key. Well, we should do something. We should do something in solidarity to, uh, to ham radio. We should do a cheers or a toast to the San Diego HRO store closing today. This was their last oh, yeah. day closing for good. Now, uh, I will I will mention as an FYI that mm-hmm. the reason the store closed was because they they hiked the rent on them. They yeah. didn't necessarily want to, but uh, that is that is what happened. Oh, sorry when that happened. And if yeah, you... somebody somebody else bought the property too. It wasn't the old guys that they used to buy rent from. Right, and if you've ever been to that, has anybody ever been there? I know Adam. I sure has been there. Uh, anybody else ever been there? Or Adam, you you. Feel What's the location good. again? Uh, HRO San Diego. Negative. So it, it's 
it's not a great plaza. Like it's it's not it's not fantastic. I went down there for a ham jam event they did, and uh, it's 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 kind of like Anaheim. It's a little rough, a little rough and tumble plaza that it's in. Mm. But they jacked the rates up on them huge, and so they just decided we we can't yeah. we can't play in this space anymore. So and they just opened one in Oregon, right? Uh, just last week. Yeah. Is HROs like a chain thing, or is it just you slap it on whatever you want to start as a business? I guess if that makes sense. It's a Wait, chain. It's it? no, big chain. Okay. They they bought a bunch of uh, the AES stores when they closed. Mm-hmm. It's it's not a franchise though. It's all owned by Robert. Okay. okay. Right. Robert is the owner of HRO. Yeah, that would be an interesting franchising option. The, the uh, ham radio sensei. But but no no that's Julian that's not oh, Robert okay. that's not Robert. Uh, so believe it or not, I asked them. I'm like, so what what would it take to get you know to to get an HRO if I wanted to buy one? And they're like, uh, we don't we don't do that. We we own all the all the companies and mm-hmm. you know all that stuff. So no that that's not that's not really on their list. <laughs> yeah, we we have a guy here that uh, whiskey nine. Or yeah, whiskey nine whiskey whiskey, or is it whiskey whiskey nine whiskey? I can't, I forget it all the time. But anyway, he his name is Robert, and he worked at HRO for years, and I've known him anyway for years anyway. But um, uh, I had gone there one day, and he was leaving; he was retiring. Mm -hmm. And then the guy that was the store manager, he got a new job uh, doing uh, something he was just really excited about. And his name was D. Anyway, he left and he said, but you're going to like who's coming in to replace me. And I said, really? He said, oh, yeah, Robert's coming back. And so they rehired Robert after he retired to come in and run the store. And Robert's still there. Robert was the one that told me, go to Texas Towers. (laughs) Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will say, uh, regardless of what your preference is for ham radio retailers, they're all really good. They're, they're all, like, there to help out the people that are wanting to buy radios. And this is this is not a high-yield uh, retail space that we work in, right, as amateur radio operators. There's not a huge market in that we are not a huge market. So the fact that, like, we can even have retail establishments like we do – if you can buy from them, I would appreciate it because it just allows them to stay in business and it gives us a couple more op- options of competitiveness, if you will, in the in the market space, which is I th- I think is good. I hope one opens near me one day. I feel like we've got a decently sized ham community in my area. I live uh, where Connor lives. Yeah, Connor. Yeah, I don't know, if you know where he is. All right, I think the guys in the UK will agree with me on this, uh, but I've gotten a lot of stuff that DX Engineering doesn't carry from our friends uh, over there at Moonraker, especially hardware to go on uh, mass, uh, all that stuff that's like double the price on Amazon and is worth the uh, shipping to get stuff from Moonraker. Really, really a great ham radio supplier if anybody's interested in letting it come across the pond. Yeah, yeah I, I, can, I, I can definitely recommend Moonraker. They they do, they're incredible value, great service, and they they just seem to stock everything. Yeah, I I got that 160 meter uh, ham stick from Moonraker, and the lady, uh, you know, came in and said, "Look, you're you're not going to like the shipping," and I and I said, "Well, what is it going to be?" And she gave me a price, and it was like, "Yeah, it's, that, that's way more than the antenna." And then she uh, sent me an email a few minutes later and said, well, wait a minute. I found another uh, carrier and I can get it to you for half that. And oh, so nice. then I, I went and I went back and ordered it from her. So, yeah, I mean, well, I think they're great. And I, th- I honestly really like what uh, MLNS does. I wish more ham radio do stores would do YouTube videos. I, like they I do. and and you know what's crazy about MLNS? They came out to our uh, Hamvention meetup. Josh, do you remember they walked up to me? The guy recognized my voice from over the phone and said, awesome. "You bought the Kenwood, didn't you?" 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's me. The the MLNS boys came out to uh, Troll Pub, and they were out there with us, you know, making videos. They had cameras up. Wow. I'm like, hell yeah, those guys are cool as hell. Like, I am I am completely on board with ML, MLNS, and like what they do with their used radios when they make videos mm-hmm. about them and stuff, dude. That's like, I I. I Aside from going in and putting hands on the radio, right, the, the closest thing you can do is a good walk around, show how it works and functions. They do all that, and it's great. They A good yep. service to the customer, for sure. Good, and they good seem company. extremely and they, honest. Yeah, they talk about the old radios, and suddenly you're you're aware of what that radio actually did compared to, like, for instance, today mm-hmm. – Looking at the 101 MP and I and or 101 D, which I have, and using it, and then they'll go through and, and say, well, you know, this was a precursor to this radio, and it has this feature, this feature, this feature, and I mean, nobody else does that. It's just uh, I watch their used thing. Well, I pretty much watch them every weekend, mm-hmm. uh, Friday and Saturday. All right. Well, I must I, admit, we we really are spoiled a for good for deals, over. Yeah, for sure. So I got we got to tap into this uh, Moby linked here. Otherwise, I'm not I'm gonna forget, and we're not gonna be mm-hmm. able to get it done here. But okay, so this is the new version four of the Moby linked. Now I I I do have my Moby link three off the side here. Is that? Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna leave that there. Okay, so here is the the new boy. Stickers, all the things. Now, there was multiple people who said the cases were slightly different. Maybe? The big thing for me is that it is uh, USB-C rechargeable now versus USB micro. I hate micro. USB-C is the way to go. And then the other thing that everybody commented on was, what's the, the push button like? So here we go. I'm going to push them at the same time. This one's dead. It is the same. That's a bummer. It's the same click. It's totally the same. All right. So I got to find a a cable. Somebody mentioned earlier in the chat that they did something with the the firmware, though, that made it a little better. Well, I hope so, but I don't know from experience. I just I saw that in the chat earlier. Question. Go ahead, question. I've been pondering on a um, buddy hex for doing POTA. Is it worth it? Is it too much work to set up for something like that, or? Oh, that's a good question. I love this question. All right, how much time you got? Like, how much time are you going to spend at the POTA? You make it worth your time. Well, probably an hour or two, maybe more. No, uh, that's I, not worth it. It's because you're going to spend the you're going to spend an hour setting the antenna up. Yeah, yeah definitely not work. worth it. So yeah. I, I know that Jason has said this on a live stream, but but here's my caveat. Jason Ham Radio TV, he did a live stream or, or was part of the YouTubers on the air live stream where he built that thing from start to finish. And it took him an hour. And then uh, Adam K6ARK was with me when we built it on Thomas Mountain. And I built that thing four times at that point that that Adams w- was with me. And I'm not saying I was trying to go for speed or anything like that, but it takes 45 minutes generally to set it up. And then takedowns maybe a bit faster, but that's the time. It's 45 minutes up, 45 minutes down basically is what I would say. Now, when I went out with Jason – to the support your parks. I've been there a couple of times with him and there's a bunch of us there. It takes us maybe 10 or 15 minutes to get it up. It, it's quick, but that's because we're all standing around. What can I do next? How can I help? The, and, the buddy yeah. hex? 
Yes. Yes. The buddy hex. We get it up in list in about 15 minutes. Or, or how I, many I guys? Know, uh, six or eight. <clears throat> so practical My, for field day, but that's it. Yeah, it, it it's practical for field day. It's practical if you're in a large group like that. And I know Jason has taken it to several events where he's had multiple people there. Even his field day, right? He deploys it as his field day. Um, sure. Now, uh, but, um, you know, again, there's multiple guys there and we get it set up pretty quick. I, but here's, here's the thing I think about it. How long are you willing to wait for it? I've been on the list for o- over a year. I'm not willing to wait for stuff. I mean, my POTA setup right now is ridiculous. It's too big. Uh, but it's I use the same setup for field day and other stuff also. So Well, he... Go ahead. I, I was going to say, and, and by the way, with six people, I guess maybe you can do it in 10 minutes? That's that seems even insane to me. I'm I'm not gonna. Mm. I I would like to see a video, uh, for a, a a top speed that you can set up a buddy hex. Ten minutes seems crazy fast. Uh, so if you're if you're a solo guy uh, on doing poda, I, th- there's no reason not to do like a wire antenna, or even a vertical like a uh, like a Wolf River or you know something along those lines. A, a buddy stick pro. Right. As a solo operator, there's no reason that you need to have a buddy hex, really, particularly if you're only going to be out there for an hour, unless you're trying to do like just the ultimate amount of contacts. If you're trying to kilo like every time you go out, then maybe then maybe you need that. Maybe you need that. Yeah. Well, one other just a second. One other advantage to it is with the right equipment mind you, you can hook up multiple radius to it and work multiple sure. bands. Well, again, field day. That That's a field day situation. Yeah, we did it on Support Your Parks, and I believe sure. uh, when Chris and Matt went out to uh, that little place in uh, 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 near in Washington, right? Mm-hmm. They, that's what they were doing as well. But that equipment is expensive. Yeah, you're talking about the <laughs> question on the multi link. <laughs> well, right now my setup is yeah. quite elaborate. Yeah. Yeah. I got the, pentaplexer. Play, the pentaplexer or quadplexer. For right now, I've been running either. Uh... On the link. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Uh, for right now, I've been basically running either an ATAS 120 ham sticks. Or an NFED or something like that. I've got a trailer that I operate out of, and it's uh, I've got a 30 foot mast on it, which does help getting things set up quick and easy. But just looking for some other options. Well, I mean, you're not you get a for chance Poda to contacts, are you? Question on that. Uh, say that again, Josh. You're not hurting for contacts on your Poda setup, are you? <sighs> I actually, today was my first going out doing POTA. I've only been a hunter so far, mm-hmm. other than today. Okay, I gotcha. Um, th- there, there are so many POTA antennas that are more efficient and fast to set up, particularly as a single person, than the hex beam, the, the, the buddy hex. Nothing against the buddy hex, but... Uh, yeah, that, that's that's what I would say. There, there's tons of options mm. that are out there that that work yeah. very good. Not not as a good of a, a, of a performer as the buddy hacks, but you know, again, it's a beam, so sure. Yeah, and the buddy pole even can take yeah. some time to to put together and, and set up. Uh, probably the easiest thing in the world is an infed half wave uh, with a mass that you lean into a tree. You can get that up in a couple of minutes. And it, well, it works got a, multiple bands. Well, I've got a 30-foot pole on the, on the trailer that I can put it to. Yeah, yeah. And then you just need, like, some place to, to string it back off to. But, yeah. I've, I've got a military generator trailer with a shelter on top of it that I run out of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this friend of mine runs his generator out of the back of his truck and runs it over to 7300 and 
Powers is 7,300 like that for Boda. And then what he's gotten to, though, is he's gotten to a straight vertical. Just the, and I don't know if it, um, who, who was it that just recently, oh, yeah, it was uh, K at MRD, Mike's latest video about the uh, 20 meter uh, uh, just uh, stainless steel whip from either Chameleon or uh, uh, the uh, Chameleon or whatever. Uh, uh, MFJ. MFJ, yeah. The sporty 40? Those, well, not necessarily that, because to me, that's like, I don't want on 40 meters. I never use 40 meters. <laughs> well, you you uh, mean the, the 17 foot, like, yeah, they're like the 17 full, foot. full-sized quarter waves on 20. Yeah, they're yeah, great. The, the sporty 40 is good, if, but I think, I, Josh, is that only for 40 meters? Why Why would you get that just to get on 40 meters? That's oh, what it, I don't get. It. Oh, yeah. it's it. Well, okay. So, um, do I have it behind me? Hold on. I might have it behind me. I'd probably be, be better off getting an empath for what I'm no, doing. I don't. Okay. So, My. the 17-foot vertical whip, right? That is resonant on 20 meters. You, you just take your – you mm-hmm. you get all the radials out underneath you. You get all the wires on the ground, and then you hook up your analyzer, and you just, you know, nudge nudge the, the telescopic whip until you're perfectly in tune for 20 meters. Right. And then you're like, okay, great. We we did 20 meters. And if you want to go higher bands, you can you can shorten it if you will or you know whatever. But let's say you wanted to get on 40 meters for some reason. Maybe it's it's nighttime. Maybe or or you're getting into dusk and you want to get on to 40 meters. Then you just add that coil to the bottom of it and there you go. You got 40 meters on the bottom of that antenna. Same whip. You're all you're done. You just add a little coil. It's like this big and you're done. Uh, Mike was talking about moving the the uh, antenna up and down the the um, collapsible well, you, whip up and yeah, down. Yeah, you gotta you gotta still retune it, of course. But like, right? It, it's well, just a, you can do that without the coil on the bottom, right? Not for forty. Both, you can't get to forty. Right, on, you can't get to forty. But forty is the only thing that's giving you, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's, okay. So. Again, uh, if you, if you think of the Wolf River coil, so uh, do you have a mm-hmm. take a, take a long one thousand? Yes, I do. And then, right, yeah, the, the so pain it, is getting to those yes. lower bands. Right, right, right. So well, so, below twenty. I mean, in in this thing, I don't with the the seventeen foot whip. I don't even need to take it along. Right. The only reason I have it is for forty and sixty. Exactly. So. 40, 60, 80 on the take it along is this whole complex problem to tune it all up. And then the reality right. of it is like, are you really going to get on 80? You, Don, you like 60. Me, I don't. I like 40. Mm-hmm. So I just throw the coil on it. I'm on 40. I'm done. That's it. Yeah. I'm done. It's really simple. And the uh, the Sporty 40 will take more power than the take it along 1000. Yeah, the, the thing is with the uh... – and, and and you'll appreciate this. If I'm going to get on 40, uh, I just use the ATOS 120. Right. Well, yeah, yeah I've got one of those. I've been band. using that for, but for Poda, I'm usually on 20. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. But it, I'm ha- on 20 or below. Ha- has anybody done a nighttime Poda? Like it doesn't happen all the time, but you can definitely do it. Yeah, I've even, uh, I've done 20 meters on nighttime Poda. Sure. Um, I mean, with my trailer, I could do it easy, but I've got lights and everything else. So, mm. I was working sixty on Pota last night at about midnight, scaring the hell out of the deer. <laughs> the, Plus, the I've got like is... three hundred amp hours, so I can run for quite a while. Yeah, I've got Mike's Big Geek. I can run. Well, in fact, I I still haven't charged the thing. I've been on three separate Potas with a hundred amp radio, or sorry, hundred watt radio. I still haven't needed to charge it yet. <laughs> So, um, and how big is the battery? That's 30 amps. I'm running 300. All right. Yeah. So, uh, was somebody, did somebody have a question on the, uh, the Moby linked? I think somebody did. So, yeah. Who was in there with a question on the Moby linked? Was it Craig? I can't hear you, Craig. Nope. I hear you. I, I see you, PGT, but I can't hear you. Yeah. I, the, the guy. Go ahead. 
No, K4TXN. I wanted to see that thing do uh, M17. It's uh, supposedly capable of now. Uh, I have heard that, but I literally just unboxed it, so I have no idea how to do that right now. Mm -hmm. Well, have you seen the videos that like T.O. and, well, Ham Radio Dude did, where they're using that little bitty tiny thing that plugs into the into a bow fang and then they're they're talking about oh it can do aprs and do it it's like that i mean that doesn't give you a tnc this gives you a tnc You're and they talking were about saying that oh you dongle? don't need the moby link yeah they were no. saying you don't need the moby link you just need this no that is not the same thing this is a completely different device are you talking about the wire the cable well, it's not a cable. It's a little bitty thing. And all it, from what I can tell, it's a Kenwood connector with a serial port thing built into it. Like any of the programming cables, that's what it looks like to me. And they're, they're going, oh, you can do. And then what they're doing is they're, they're connecting that up mm -hmm. and then they're running. Um, an app. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, an app. Yeah. Uh, APRS droid or something like that. Right. And then it connects into, well, yes, but that's like. This thing already does all of that part. Yeah, this is where Don, you have to you have to tell these young kids about the world of modems and how mm -hmm. things like modems actually work because that's what a TNC is. When you exactly. Get yeah. And I'm yeah. like, no, that's not the modem. And running, uh, digi digi whatever the oh gosh direwolf running yeah. direwolf that creates the modem. That is so the modem. It's yeah, a software modem. You, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can do that, but that is not cheaper and it's not the same thing as the uh moby link mm -hmm. this goes back to my whole concept that you and i have talked about of why mm -hmm. a, a proper tnc having a good uh packet radio system with a pbbs is great because you you abstract all that functionality into a little box that takes your messages and everything else all right there, and you just connect into it. It's doing all the heavy lifting yeah. for you, and you just connect into it. It's simple, easy. You're right. And, yeah, I've, I've wanted a TNC forever. Uh, well, I've got one, but good God, that's an, that was one built in 1991, uh, the old MFJ with the uh, huge, huge connector on it. it no, you want the Cantronics, the... man. That new Cantronics is great. I know. Well, this can do a lot of that, right? Sure. Well, yeah, it's not like this is new technology. This is, right. yeah. And uh, actually, I've got a radio with a TNC in it, but I'm using it for All Star, so. And then I had some dude tell me that, oh, no, you don't want to do that. You want to get a Shari. It's so much better. I'm like, no, it's it's not <laughs> anyway, whatever. Oh, they finally added USB to the KPC3s, huh? Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, they've had that for a while. Go look at my videos from like two years ago. The thing is, they're to me, for what they are, because they're very equivalent to this, they're too expensive. But maybe uh, that's they're not, from they're volume. They're not KISS. So uh, the, K, the, KPC, the KPC3 will do KISS, but it's, it's not. Like... Mm -hmm. it'll do full TNC. So you can do well, packet with it. You can do APRS with it. Uh, you it, can do full PBBS. So it's it's running the BBSs on in the box. So right. it has all and the then, memory for multiple stations to be able to either have a local mailbox or, you know, distribute connect to other uh, packet stations. Yeah, the, the MFJ I has, have has that too that's that's the one difference in those than than this so you get instead of the kiss you get that plus oh okay you want to run a bulletin board we've got it already built into the firmware right i mean that the, the cantronics has all of that it, it's, mm -hmm. it's like a universal it does everything within packet radio yeah and packet radio i i, I honestly don't know why that went away <laughs> I, guess I don't either. I don't I don't fully understand. I mean, it, it didn't go away. It's still there in the form of like Winlink, but it's not it's not the same. A API no. kind of came in and, and pushed it off a little bit, I it, think. Is Shane we used to use we used to use those. I set up I had a whole like nine. APRS doesn't really do what 
what at least when I was doing packet back in ninety, right? I could I it was like my bulletin boards that I was running at the time, mm -hmm. where you could put a message on it, and it would get to a ham in New York through the packet radio system. It did not go over the wire in any way or shape or form because right. it would have had to have a dial up modem on it, and it didn't. This was all over the air. That's right, the right. thing that I don't understand why that's not still there. Because for messaging, that would be killer. Well, I, uh, I just think a lot of people repurposed their their uh, their TNCs and started using them for APRS, and that's yeah, yeah. They kind of you know. And I'd love to. I'd love to put up an eye gate. The problem is here we don't need one, <laughs> but there are places. There are plenty of places out there that need eye gates. So, uh, really quickly, Shane, Shane, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. So you you've been asking questions about digi rigs and all that stuff. Are you you all right, man? Or what's going on there? Yeah, I'm I'm good. I just <clears throat> I haven't been able to use it because the weather's been crap. But I um I was just wondering if that digi rig was it supposed to come with a case in that kit because I went to Giga Parts in Vegas and I it didn't have a case with it. I just Checking. No, it just came in like a, a baggie and it's just a little block, yeah. mm -hmm. a little block yeah. with the cables on both sides and that's it. Okay. All but right. then to, I, I, I think to... you also asked a question about the 891 and, and using the digi rig. Yes. yes, absolutely. Yeah. You, you can totally mm -hmm. do all the things with that, with that device. Well, and... I was, remember I was, t I was texting you that one day cause I was using it and every time I keyed up the, Sound put input just went kaput. Right. So, uh, yeah. did you actually solve that problem, or are you solving that problem? I haven't had a chance to try it because it's been raining, so <laughs> well, <laughs> I haven't it, been able to get out in the field and test it. If you remember, Shane, you were you were the uh, FT8 man video. Yes, I remember that. How could I ever forget? So that that's that's what this feels like a little bit. It's like FT8 man, please help me. I need I need help with my uh my yeah, my eight eight ninety one. But it's the same mm -hmm. radio. It's the same radio, just a different audio interface. So uh, that's that. There's really not that much difference to it, to be honest. It's the same setup. Yeah. Supposedly the okay. eight ninety one will work with the eight fifty seven D, which I that's mm -hmm. that's honestly why I bought a digi rig. I really want to do. Uh, use the uh, eight eight fifty seven, and then uh, then I can go Poda and do t two meter uh, FT eight. There you go. Well, see that the FT ninety one requires a second cable, versus the eight fifty seven doesn't require a second USB cable. And I'm there trying is. to figure out where the RFI is coming from. If it's the power cable or if it's the USB the second USB cable or what? And it requires two USB cables. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I got a buddy who's got an 891, and he ha he got one of the digi rigs too, and he said was telling me the same thing. And I guess one for power, one for cat control. Cat, yeah, the other one's for cat. But what would you do with the 850, uh, 897 mm -hmm. or 857? Because cat <coughs> control on ours is a is a different port too. Uh, is that a question for me, or is that someone else? Yeah. What What are you? No, uh, I'm just I'm just curious as to how how it would do cat because like I've got a I've got a signal link that I bought when I got my 897, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it doesn't do it doesn't do the cat. All, all the signal link is is an external USB that's got the interface to go to the 897, so it can't change. Copy. Me. You guys copy me uh, up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. Oh, good. Yeah, on that Moby link, to, uh, I've been through uh, all their documentation following these videos uh, since you guys started. A um, million dollar question for me is uh, how would I build it and use this with something like my uh, Kenwood uh, TS590S? Yeah. I mean, you'd have to look up the audio interface company to see that it. Uh, will work with that radio. Yeah, that's the only other thing I'm trying to figure out. Uh, like everything, you know, I get a TNC4 on my hand. Uh, what next do I need to make them work? Uh, 
Oh, you're roboting a little bit. Your internet is uh, getting kerchunky. So uh, the the best thing you can do is like Google your radio and like cat control and see what shows up for people that have uh, have established cat control on on your type of radio, right? So I put a couple of ferrites in the USB power cable, and I'm going to see if that helps when I get a chance. So as a as a complete like gear shift, I want to show this before uh, before I forget to show it off. I uh, I stumbled on another EDC item that I want to let you guys know about. All right, so the TNC three is sitting right there, right? Or the and the four and the four. And I have a flashlight sitting right here. So this is the uh, Rovi Vaughn, right? I mentioned Rovi Vaughn in, a, in another video or, that I've done. So they call this a dual fuel flashlight. It has an internal battery. And also it takes a AAA battery as like a back, backup cell. So it has the regular uh, flashlight modes, right? So it's, it's still just a regular flashlight. But the side lights have red, UV. So again, like if you're in a hotel room and you want to know if it's a, a sus hotel, you got a but UV you light. really don't want to know. But you may not want to know. Yeah, 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 right. And then it has a, uh, a a white light too. Hold on, let me get out of that. There's the white light. Dude, I just got I just got back from Vegas, and you're telling me that now? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And then it's got a desk light too that you can you can just set up, and then you can do that with like logging or whatever. This thing is awesome, and it's it, it's super cool because – so I have the Rovi Vaughn, the single, the single body one, which it basically functions the same way, and it allows you to, you know, have, you know, that, that capability, same flashlight capability, although this has a higher output. It's uh, 700 lumens or something like that, but the fact that you can just throw a AAA in it and it'll just use the AAA if it needs it, super, super cool, and one of my favorite things about I don't know that I can show this on the live stream, but we'll see. It's uh, the whole body is glow in the dark. UV in the bathroom. That sounds like a song. Oh, wait. It's part of a song. Yeah, the whole body glows green. I don't know if you... Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it's uh, USB-C yeah. rechargeable. Finally, USB-C rechargeable. Bang. Amazing. Well, they must be complying with that European law. I wish the USB-C would uh, charge the glow in the dark, but, you know, hey, we can't have everything. Right? <laughs> Man. And you're going to make me buy yet another flashlight. I have oh, my have God, here. dude. I, 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 uh, I resisted it for so long, but then I was like, oh, I don't really have a good USB-C rechargeable, and this is probably the best because... Worst case scenario, you can just throw another AAA in, and it's it's off and running. What? Well, wasn't that little one that you were showing the other week? Because I bought one of those, and that's USB-C. So that is the the difference with this one is that this one has a higher output, right? And then has the the side load AAA. That's the only difference. It's the same yeah. setup though, same setup. So you don't well, need I, to like upgrade from that. That's a good. That's a good light. No, I I'd, I'd I'd like to have the US or the the uh, AAA backup. Because yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I I was using mine the other day, and then it it you know it got discharged, and I'm like, oh okay, yeah, I can charge it again. But damn it, I'm trying to find something. And I that that thing is so useful. Trying to find your charger in the dark, right? No, I I got Noel anyway. I don't want to. Oh, that's the right. Whole story, I, but Dave Dave was uh, there at uh, who was? No, no, it's not Dave. Where was it? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, where is it? Jo yeah, it was Jamscan. <laughs> Jamscan. <coughs> By the way, Jamscan, appreciate you hanging out even after that long ass conversation we had. But uh, Jamscan and I were chasing raccoons in the in the in the back country there at the Monsanto before we got into our, <laughs> our heated conversation. And I, I even my little tiny flashlight is super bright, particularly out there is like darkness. Mm. Yeah, check well, your cash too. Yep. I I had mine at the uh, at our uh, ham event. We have this thing called the President's Dinner. Everything was all dark and everything, and they were they were reading tickets out to see if you won a prize. And I could not see the ticket number, so I took that little flashlight out and turned it on. And everybody at the around me is going, "Whoa, what are you doing? Turn that off!" <laughs> But you got multiple options. You can go full beam, or you can just do like the ambient white light. Oh, I know. I, I, that's what I did after that. But I, you know, I I didn't even realize that. You know, I'm pointing it down, and they're to the off to the side of it. Yeah. And still, they're like, whoa. <laughs> it's. I mean, it it is. Uh, I I have I have I have tiny hands, but like it is it's a small. Mm -hmm. It's a small. Uh, it's a small light, and the fact that it has a triple A in there is like, oh, it's super. Oh cool. yeah. Well, the other one is really tiny, and but it's got that really strong magnet at the back of it. Oh, so and... that mine doesn't have that, but the fact yours has a magnet is really nice because you can just click mm. it under things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the The only thing is, I carry it on my keychain, and it's always like, you know, connecting my keys. It doesn't. I mean, who cares? But uh, it does do that. Well, anyway, the link is in the description if you want to like check it out on Amazon. You don't have to get it through me, or you don't have to get it at all. But just an FYI, it is a a, a fantastic flashlight as far as EDC goes. And I I don't really try and nail you with all that stuff, but that is a a, mm -hmm. a really cool little piece of kit. Yeah. So is the Moby Link Four. Now that's impossible to get. Now they're gone. They're all sold oh, out. I know. I, I, mine, mine is on order, but I don't know that it's shipped and that, that worries me because I don't know when those are supposed or the next batch is supposed to ship. Although I bought mine right around the same time you bought yours. So I'm hopeful it'll come soon. Uh oh, someone's got a full, full HF audio they're bringing in here. That's my bad. Sorry. I didn't realize I was piping that through the same mic. Uh, do you know what day you ordered yours? Because I got my shipment notification. I ordered it the Monday Josh posted it. I, um, I can Monday. look because it's in my email. Yeah, Blake, you're, you're piping uh, CW filtered audio from your radio. <laughs> your is, mic. Is, is that better? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's better. <clears throat> it's yeah, better. I have, them, I have them hooked together so I can listen, and I didn't realize I still had it on monitor. What? Yeah, but I I did. By the way, I did uh, I did get the Sark track today. But the the funny thing was, it literally set in Germany for more than ten days. Once it hit the U.S., it came here. Like, uh, in fact, it, it went from Germany to U.S. overnight when it finally left. But man, it just sat there for ten days. <laughs> Apparently, I'm still setting off fire alarms, so that's good. That's good news. We know we're getting our signal out there, boys. Dude, what is it with you and setting off fire alarms? I I don't know. I think I, actually, I think it's it's the proximity of the uh, the antenna to the roof, particularly for forty meters. Uh, it it never sets anything off at the lower frequencies, or sorry, higher frequencies, lower bands. If you if you catch my drift. On the uh, TNC4, I've been going through their website for a couple of days. Um, they're saying that February sh ships on the 27th, and the next orders won't start until the beginning of March, so probably next delivery uh, in the first part of April. I just don't know why they couldn't just have a switch on the side of it. Like, it just needs a switch. Like, just a click, that's it. Like every time I put it in the bag that I carry it in, it gets bumped and then it's on and then it just depletes itself. It's very frustrating. Very frustrating. Yeah. 
Yeah. Might I share that I also now have the Explorer backpack. And that oh, thing is... do you? Yes, I do. I haven't made the video on that yet. They sent it to me without saying anything, and I have it, and I loaded it up, and I've been using it for a couple of months now. What do you think so far? Oh, it worked very well when I was in Vegas, and then my dad also got me one of those drive-over flagpole supports. Oh, okay. And boy, when I when I sent you the picture from Red Rock Canyon, that's what I was using. Nice. And my NFED was an inverted B configuration, and man, I was working pile ups with that. What um, what antenna did you put on the uh, or what mast are you using, and then what antenna? I'm using the DX Commander, uh, ten meter, no, seven meter telescopic nice. mast. Nice. And uh, the, the antenna is a Coffee and Ham Radials forty ninety one in fed halfway. Nice, very cool. All right, all right. I activate. I activated four parks that week. Uh, Mojave National Preserve, Tule Fossils Fossils National Monument, Red Rock Canyon State Park, and uh, Desert Wildlife Refuge. Yeah, you were you were uh by the way, uh shout out to your significant other for letting you go on a, a vacation where you got to activate like multiple parks. That was pretty cool of her. <laughs> I'll pass it on. Yeah, that was pretty cool, man. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Does she does she have any any interest in ham radio or anything like that? No. No, she doesn't, but her dad and both of her brothers are all hams. Mm. And uh, her da her dad used to be a member of the Super System, if you remember that. Uh, that goes way back. Yeah, okay. Yes. Her brothers are both Eagle Scouts, and um, yeah, her dad and both of her brothers are all hams. But, nice. Uh, no, she doesn't, she doesn't really have any interest in it right now. But she let me... Uh, she... <laughs> She, what'd she say? She said, uh, we were at the hotel room one day and she was going to go downstairs and play this, play some slots. And she's like, why don't you go buy Giga parts? I said, okay. <laughs> That's more expensive than gambling. Dude, right? <laughs> but yeah, that, I'd say the photos were more fun than gambling for me. Well, that's gambling on her part. I, I would just like okay wait I I have to I have to bring this up on stream. Adam, how how do you have a uh, pocket mast holder? Who 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 is holding the mast there for you, Adam? That's my mountain rescue buddy who happened to be out at the dunes with me that day, and uh, I wanted to do a quick activation. I was like, I don't want to stick my my telescopic pole in the sand and get sand in all the joints. Hey, Nick, could you hold this for me for about ten minutes? He had somebody hold his mast, and it's an in, uh, inverted that just V. Sounds wrong in so many ways. <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's a, that is uh that is super cool. Look at this picture. This picture is awesome. Hey Adam, that's the same park I activated on the way to Vegas. Where were you? So that's at the Kelso Kelso Dunes. It's kind of on the southwest side of the park there. Uh it's a really cool place. The the Mojave Road goes across it too, which is uh fun off-road, relatively easy off-road trail, and there's just all kinds of stuff to explore out there. The Mitchell Caverns is really worth a visit, too. Okay, okay. I activated that park as well on the way to Vegas, but they had Kel Baker Road closed at Baker, so I had to activate yeah. like right there on the edge. But it was, it yeah. was still a lot of fun, and there was zero noise, which is fantastic. Yeah, it, it's it's a really cool place. Uh, Afton Canyon and some really good rock hounding out there. Uh, re really cool place. Yeah, my Moby Link was ordered on February seventh. Was that like the day I that they on, released I, it? They, that's what I thought. I passed on the shout out there, Josh. So your word is passed on. Okay, good. No, it was released on, I believe, the 6th, and I ordered mine 
at like 7 p.m. on the 6th, and I got the shipping link on Thursday. So you're probably just a little lower in the queue. Mm -hmm. I was Johnny on the spot uh, with the order, and then I told everybody on Twitter and Instagram, like, go buy this thing. And then they sold out immediately after that. Yeah, I saw it on Facebook. On Oh, that's a fishing rod. Adam, that's a fishing rod, right? That is is that a fly rod? Uh, Tele- it's a telescopic pole. It's it's one of my real small ones. It packs down to about 30 centimeters, 35 centimeters, and I think it's only 12 feet or so. It's but not does very it have tall, a foam it handle? Tiny. It has a foam handle or cork handle at the end? No, it's um. I think I had heat shrink on that one. I usually put heat shrink on it. Oh, it's a it. thumb. I, I'm sorry. That's their thumb. Ah, <laughs> uh, Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm gonna kill myself now. Oh, that's cool though. That the the latter picture, the second picture is even more impressive. Look at this, guys. Oh, that's such a cool picture, man. That's so cool. It's it's kind of crazy. Like I I don't I don't think people like fully appreciate like California is like a lot of part desert. Like it's mostly desert. So this is, uh, what is it, just north of Baker? It It's south. It's off. Oh, it's, it's south. It's closer to the, it's the south it's side like of the preserve. It's between the 40 and the 15. Between the 40 and the 15. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Yeah, so when... th- uh, this is the lowland desert area. Like if you're coming over Big Bear kind of thing, the down look on the north side. No, it's it's a bit. Um, so if, if you're driving to Vegas, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's like just on the California side of the the border, and then almost all the way to to Barstow, maybe forty miles north of or north east of Barstow. Um, it's everything south of you on off the fifteen there. Gotcha. Oh, that's cool. It's like yeah, south. It's it's a little south of where I was parked to activate when I was there, off of uh, the 15 at Kel Baker Road. So that takes you through Kelso and down to 40 into Am. No, between Amboy and Ludlow. Yeah, the, the Kelso Dunes are a soda summit. There, there's enough prominence just from those sand dunes for it to, you know, be over 485 feet of of uh, prominence. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a neat soda spot. I just posted another picture of the Mitchell caverns there and that's just like maybe 10 or 15 miles away, um, state park within the preserve there. And they do tours. You need reservations well ahead of time. Cause it's, you know, they, they s- severely limit how many people go through there and their, their guided tours, but it's, it's a pretty amazing hey, uh, thing. Hey Adam, you know where Mid Hills is? Sorry, what was the name of that? Mid Hills. I uh, sounds familiar, but I, I give me a little more context. It's in the middle of all that. It's uh, off of Sema Road in the okay. in the yeah. Maui National Preserve there. So yep. my my YL my YL and her brothers and her dad used and her mom used to go camping there every year between Christmas and New Year. Nice. Yeah, I want to do it so bad because it's very, it's very secluded and out in the middle of nowhere. I was like, that would be. So- how how far away is Mitchell Caverns, or where where is it? Um, it, it's it's in Mojave National Preserve. It's it's right in the middle of the preserve there, kind of on the this uh, somewhat on the southwest side in the oh uh, well, yeah, th- there's a mountain range there. Um, oh, but not here. uh. There's none here. Yeah, it's it it's kind of southwest side of the preserve, off I forty, uh, maybe an hour east of Barstow. East side of Barstow. Okay, I I sent this to my wife. Uh, have you ever been to Crystal Caverns in Sequoia? Mm, uh, I don't think so. If I have, it's been a long time ago. You ever okay. been to Carlsbad? I'm no, sure. I'd like to go. Oh, okay, you haven't, Mexico. Adam? You haven't been? Isn't that closer no. to you? Oh, it's cool. No, no. Di- yeah. New Mexico. Carlsbad. Yes. New Mexico. 
Yeah, it's on the it's on the Texas side of New Mexico. So it's uh man, that that sucker is huge. And uh at night, uh when you're camping there, go and watch the bats come out of the cave. Oh man. They do that in Austin like every day. That's like a they have a uh, boat tour th- for that. Yeah, but that that they're coming out from under the bridge. There, no, I they? know, I know. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, these to... are coming yeah. out of the cave. To be, yeah, and to it's you walk into. that's that's a higher level of bat. Well, no, it's it it, it's a it joke. takes them it takes them longer to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so much, so many more. But no, it's not not to take away from the one in Austin though. But uh, it's uh, and then. When the next day, uh, the, or at least the way it worked for us, the next day, then we're walking down into that opening to go down into the caverns. And if you can do it, take the whole tour. Start from at the uh, it, walk down through the entrance all the way down into the deep part of it. And then because it takes a good hour and a half, two hours to get down to the bottom. Oh, wow. And then And then another two or three hours to go around it. And then when you get when you get uh, back to the lunch room, which they have a huge lunch room down at the bottom of the cavern, um, there's an elevator that'll take you right up to uh, the park eight, ranger eight, station. What is it? 800, 800 feet. That's that super cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, cold it's, in there though. Bring a jacket. Oh yeah, it gets really yeah, cold. It's like in this. It's like sixty degrees or something like that. No, but it's long. like mm-hmm. it's 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 like a. a like a it's a damp. bone chilling cool, it 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 hits mm. you deep. It goes all the way into your body. Yeah, but what's cool is when you when they take you in there and then they go, okay, we're going to turn the lights off. Now. Yes, yeah. Oh yeah. god. <laughs> and you're like, well, this is frightening. I'm glad I brought so my. Dark. I'm glad I brought my Rovi Vaughn flashlight to get me out of here. Well, the, when they did it to us, we were standing next to like they have this huge rail. And then just over the other side of the rail is this like pit and you right. cannot see down in the end of the yeah. pit. And then they flip the lights off. And you're going, I'm standing right next to that pit. So I, I would like to also say this is a really good opportunity to recommend everybody watching to go watch the movie series, The Descent. One of my favorite horror movie, whatever movies, The Descent. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Adam, Mitchell Caverns, like if you go do the tour, how long is it? Is it like uh, how, how it's deep not do they that go? long? It, yeah, it probably takes, uh, I would guess, no more than two and a half or three hours. There's a, oh, a shortish great. hike over to the caverns from the visitor center on a, a well groomed trail. Um, and then the, you know, the transit through the caverns and the, you know, the, the talk that goes with it. So I would say two to three hours in that range. Oh, I love that. Okay. I, I'm adding that. So I thought I had to go to the crystal caverns to get a good kind of like well-groomed cave experience to take the kids on. And that's in the Sequoias and you do have to hike in like a considerable amount to get to it. So if Mitchell is like that, which it sounds like it is, I'm, I'm totally down to to uh take everybody all the family and the kids to that that's awesome i love that thanks uh thanks adam appreciate it y'all ever been to mammoth cave yes. mammoth cave that's no a- just remember josh it gets really hot out there in the summertime sure of course everything gets hot in the summertime right so, but it's mountains. cold it's Middle cold the Mojave desert <laughs> but it's cold when you're in the cave right shane Okay, good good point, good point. Good point. Yeah. In at Carlsbad what we did was we camped up in the uh Rocky Mountains and then came down uh to go to the cave, so. Yeah, it was it, it, it was, was not it, it, was, it was not hot. hot. It was hot above ground when I was there and then so it was a massive temperature drop when you went down to the cave. I mean, you went mm-hmm. it was like 97 degrees up top. Well, it was like Adam like, is just showing off right now. Look yeah, we picture. camped up. That in is the a Rockies. fantastic okay. picture, Adam. Fantastic. Yes, that is an amazing picture. That is an amazing picture. I would like to go see Mammoth Cave. I've only been in utero. <laughs> so there so Mammoth Cave is uh not too far from here, and there is a Cave City ham fest that happens in the town. Uh the uh 
and that's next weekend, and I'm going to go to that. Where is Mammoth Cave? And they have, it's in, um, it's in Kentucky. I don't know the name of the town technically it's in, other than, I don't know, is it Cave City? Oh, I, Cave I don't City. want to assume. I'm thinking like Mammoth Mountain. It's Mammoth Mountain Cave or something. No, it's like a that. national yeah. park, so yeah. it's not like it's not like you know Ruby Falls or anything that like that that's private. <coughs> what was the uh, the it's cave got, where that it's guy got over died? Four hundred miles of uh, of mapped cave. What was that cave where the guy like got all twisted up and died in? I forget. Oh my god, it was like a whole thing. It was a bunch of YouTube. Are videos you talking about that National Geographic? Uh, Movie or whatever the heck it was. Uh, maybe I don't know. We had to cut off his yeah. own arm or something like that. No, 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 no. no, no. Uh, oh, he, something else. The the rocks fell on his leg and he got pinned, and then it was like, like a multiple weeks long of people like feeding him intravenously and trying to get him out of there, and they couldn't figure out how to do it. And it was like oh. uh, in the 1920s or something like that, or 1930s. Boy, that's. Yeah, that was wasn't like that the guy that went he went in head first at yes. the air for his yes, brother, yes, and yes. then they couldn't get him out, yes, and he eventually, yes. Yes. yeah, he drowned in his own blood because his blood his heart couldn't continue to pump it, yeah, up to his legs, yeah, because yeah, he was yeah, freezing, yeah. he was freezing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a thing. He was he was and, trying to make a tourist attraction out of the cave. He was trying to excavate the cave out. And then he was he was in there chiseling, and it, and, and the cave collapsed on him. Well, so Mammoth Cave is about an hour and 28 minutes or 94.6 miles drive from Nashville. It's okay. Three hours mm-hmm. and 50 or 46 minutes from me here. And, so. and, oh, and you, wanna, cave. And, and you want to talk about a uh, cave or dying in a cave. Those guys that do. I cave do. Diving. I want to talk about dying in a cave. That's what I want to <laughs> talk about. You ever seen the video of the guy, uh, Film well. No, let's not talk about that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Josh. I had a question for you about the camp, the camp oh out God. for April. Yes, sir. Uh, so I saw I saw that form um that you have on the Discord here. Is that all I got to do is fill that out, or is there yep. anything else I got to do? No, you're good. Fill that out. You're good. Okay. Um, unless you. I, okay, I thought so... about a hundred dollars a person. I'm not sure what that means or. Oh uh, yeah, it, it, it well it, it doesn't it doesn't include all of your food, but it includes multiple meals and I think we're going to have a t-shirt or something along that the lines for the people that come out and okay. there's some other things that that covers. It it covers the campsite is really what it covers more than anything. Okay. Uh we're we're just doing it to like, you know, break even kind of thing and then try and add some fun stuff to it. Um Okay, cool. If you don't have an RV, the the RV checkbox is there just for the extra space an RV requires. It's not hooked up or anything like that. But I'm saying this for everybody that's listening. The RV okay. uh, spot is not for hookups. It's just an extra long spot. That's all it is. So if you don't have an RV, don't click the box. If you have a camper, like a, a slide on camper in your truck bed, don't click the RV thing. It it doesn't mm. help you out at all. Just just take a regular spot. You'll be fine. Mm. Okay. I'll spell out that form as soon as possible. All right, buddy. Well, I'm glad you're and uh Yeah, yeah. And my wiles like, well, she she actually asked me earlier, she's like, Have you done that yet? I'm like, no. She's like, you need to do that. <laughs> So I'm going to do that, and then uh, she's about to show me the movie National Treasure because I've never seen it before. Oh, so my I gotta God. Say for you. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm the worst. Awesome we movie. Steal, we got to steal the Declaration of Independence on the best hey, side's a treasure hey, map. Hey, 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 no spoiler alerts here, okay? I'm, we're just starting Okay, it. you're right, you're right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's yeah, like... That, that, that was in the trailer. I mean, That's you like know, peak that Nicolas Cage. from that. So here, That's true. here, uh, not to not to take things off of ham radio, but I'm gonna head out here in a little bit. So this is where I'm gonna go off the rails a little bit. So anyway, I got wanted to say seven three. Y'all have a great night. Oh, good, Shane. Go, yeah, go, head out of here before I spoil more of National Treasure for you. So it's <laughs> it's only been it's only been over a decade since that movie came out. So uh, yes, I know. Spoiler I know. warnings do not apply at this point. You're no longer it's safe. Been, you must been leave. Almost two decades. 
<laughs> yeah. It's probably available on VHFs. So here, here's a question. Here's a question. I'll get that form to you as soon as possible, Josh. Okay. Well, no, you, you're not getting it to me. You're getting it to my wife. That's the boss. That's the one. Oh, that to, your, to your wife. There, yes, there you go. Yes. Okay. Okay. So All here's right. seventh grade, everybody. Here's the question for everybody that remains. Is The Rock a Bond movie? The hell? Why is it still open? There it goes. Ooh. You mean Dwayne Johnson? No. Is no. the what movie the no. The no. Rock? I would, I would definitely say no to that. A Bond movie. Wasn't he? No. Now, now let's consider for a moment. In The Rock, Sean Connery's character is an intelligence agent that has been arrested and put to sleep, basically. Like, it's not supposed to see the light of day again. And it's only because of his knowledge of The Rock, Alcatraz, that he comes out of, you know, whatever. Which, hypothetically, the timeline doesn't necessarily line up, so I appreciate that. But it is Sean Connery, so... But it's also Michael Bay. But it's also Michael Bay. So so that's the problem with this. It's diametrically opposed. Michael Bay has nothing to do with 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 Bond or any of the characters, you know, along that. But Sean Connery carries a lot of gravitas. And if you factor in this intelligence agent type thing, is the rock a Bond movie? But I mean maybe he's a Spanish conquistador too. You could call it Please do not bring Highlander. Highlander is not allowed to be entered into this. This is not uh <laughs> Well, I'm just saying. What was his name in Highlander? Um M- Juan Ramirez. Felipe Ramirez. 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 Juan yeah, if Ramirez. If you're going to talk about Sean Connery movies, they, there could be only one. And uh, so, how, many, so how many Scotsmen have uh, how many how many or how many uh, Spanish conquistadors do you know that have Scottish accent? <laughs> but yeah, he was really. also supposed to be an Egyptian, right? That was the whole joke about that. Like, well, not... uh, was that the was that the second or third one? I don't know. They got no, 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 no. It's the first one. He he was yeah. he was like an Egyptian uh, consort, but had a Spanish name and is obviously very Scottish because he's Sean mm-hmm. Goddery. All right, folks. Uh, Sean Connery, a, a, a Scotsman, as a Russian in the Hunt for Red October. Really? Yeah, he he was a he was. Well, you know, he could yeah. be the same person because he he was a uh, immortal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I I am of the mindset that I would uh, I would say that the uh, the Rock could qualify as a Bond movie. I think that has as much credence as my theory that Robert California on the office is Raymond Reddington. Raymond Reddington. Why do I uh, – Raymond Reddington. Who is that? Well, I'm not going down this rabbit hole. It's after midnight on the East Coast. Good night, guys. See ya. Good night. Who, who is Raymond Reddington? Oh, the, the Blacklist the character. The Blacklist. <coughs> I seen that one. Um, by the way, Robert California is possibly one of the funniest things that ever happens at the office. It, oh, yeah. uh, he is so goddamn funny. Everything he does is it, it's the best. It, it is it well, is and, and I don't like the office. As someone who's not like a fan of the office, I am not a fan, but Robert California is just the level of insanity and and just ridiculous levels of confidence that he puts out that is just stupid. <laughs> well, if if there's that oh. one episode where he tells Andy that he uh he doesn't even rem- he doesn't even know his real name and that he's the uh the lizard king or something and then he changes his name and and gets uh what's his name to give him money to go uh <laughs> to Europe to Teach underprivileged gymnasts. I don't know. It's it's Raymond Reddington. Uh, 
by the way, there there is a whole TikTok. If you didn't know this, there's a TikTok on uh, Teal'c from Stargate. If you didn't know that, is the voice of uh, Kratos from the God of War, and it's just him doing dad jokes, and it is hilarious. Hilarious. Look I that up. Teal'c. He is my one of my favorite characters on that show. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I don't watch. It's, good show. It's, it's still good. Teal'c is. Want... Go ahead. Go ahead, Don. Sorry. No, go ahead, because you, you're carrying on with something else. I was going to change it a little I, bit. I was going to say, Teal'c is like uh, Seven of Nine. Like, it's that whole, like, enemy crossover character. Like, Teal'c was a part of the... Uh, what do they call themselves? The Egyptian crew? The, the guys it with the thing in their stomach? Yeah. It the Jaffa. Jaffa. The yeah, Jaffa, yeah. that's it. The Jaffa. Cree. Of course, of course. And they had the little push button things where the head armor came over, like that whole jam. The staff, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and they were they were the were army not, of raw, yeah. Yeah, they were were or were not the ones with the uh, thing in their stomach. They 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 were they were basically the incubators for for the um not the tokra, the tokra the good ones, but the gold. Um, the gold. The yeah, gold. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, oh man, this is this is peak nerd we're getting into. But the, the gold yeah. and the toker are, are the same species. They're just like the bad and the good ones. So. Mm. Anyway, go on, Josh. <laughs> that was it. That was all I had. No. That was all I had now, on that. Have you seen? Have you I seen? I blew the my guy, load on that. And I think it's on t- that he's on TikTok, but he like has pictures of pickup trucks that people send him. And then he comments on the pick. The oh yeah, truck. Oh, oh God. yeah, that's funny. Oh yeah, or you, like tell me, tell me where you come from, or I'll yeah. tell you where you come from from looking at yeah, your gonna, truck and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or I'm going to tell you what what kind of person you are based mm-hmm. on your truck. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Wait, let me. There's a lot of good videos like that. By the way, there's a lot of good mm-hmm. ham radio videos like that on uh, TikTok. Yeah, I I don't get on TikTok. Unfortunately, they are now rolling those onto Facebook in their reels thing. So I've seen, I've seen some really funny stuff on there. Well, they're putting them on YouTube shorts too. Yeah. Well, I, I'll pick them up on those two, but I'm not going to touch TikTok. Yeah. I won't, I won't put TikTok on my phone either. Oh my I God. I, I won't even bring it up on the computer in a, uh, one of those privacy windows either. It's just no. Oh, and Jason, Jason Momoa, uh, he is still and will mm. always be Ronan Dex to me. That's his most famous character, in my opinion. Ronan Dex, what is that? Yeah, about? that was a good character. That's Ronan Dex was from uh, Stargate Atlantis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on the run from the space vampires. <laughs> I can't the remember. The space their... vampires. Good. Yes. And. Uh... I I preferred uh, Jewel Strait from uh, uh, the uh, uh, God. What is the now? I can't I can't think. It's it's already too late for me. But the uh, uh, fly, Firefly. She she's Firefly, not not uh, Stargate. Sorry. Oh um oh shoot! What was her name? She was like kind of the rogue kind of character. Uh, oh, she was basically a thief, right? She was in like all in both series, I think. No, she was like a she was a commander or something like that, and or a doctor in Stargate Atlantis. You talking about the black haired British woman? No, Jewel Strait. Oh, okay. You don't remember you 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 didn't see Firefly. Uh, yeah, once I saw it once. Uh, yeah. What do you mean you saw I, I like it once? It. What does that mean? So I, so I, much I, I better. I watched the whole series once. Oh, I've okay. Seen the movie. I've seen. Um, yeah. So well, she was. She, yeah, Jill. Jill State was the uh, uh, mechanic. Okay. Okay. That's oh, Kaylee. Cool. Kaylee. Yeah. yeah. She's got a TikTok, yeah. by the way. She. She is like uh, her aging is impeccable. Like it's crazy. She mm. she has a TikTok. She's on TikTok all the yeah. time. Uh, let's see. Let me go back here. I get chills when Ra transformed to a gray in Stargate the movie. It freaked me out when I was young. You sound like an Art Bell listener, sir. That was from EP. 
or or a super nerd. Yeah. Wait, wait. He was a Ra was a gray. Uh, yeah. He, he, like when when the uh, the nuclear warhead was detonating, he turned into like a glowing gray alien type thing. Oh, this is before the. Well, this is the movie. The, like yeah. the movie differs oh. uh, like tons from the show. Like mm -hmm. way way big time. Yeah, because your traditional grays were actually um, like like Thor was a was a gray. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, there was. Yeah, but or the, his whole people. They but they had, they had stopped biological reproduction and had gone into. You know, you're talking about Thor, the Marvel character Thor. No, no Thor, like as in the god Thor. Yeah, just like the just like the, the the Egyptian gods were actually the aliens. Well, the Viking gods were also aliens, but they were the good ones that were in battle against the, the 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 bad ones. Okay, so if if you want to go down the realm of like Art Bell alien lore, the uh, the tall whites were the uh, the the Thor ish people. The tall whites they were not the Greys. The Greys Asgardian. Were... No, 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 no. There was a there was an Asgardian named Thor. I think it was in Atlantis. No, it was it was in both of them. Well, no, the Asgardians are the ones that gave us. Um, light speed technology, but they were trying to keep us down. They used to use like. See, th th this is when we're dipping into fiction, and then obviously <laughs> oh, yeah. very real alien <laughs> knowledge. Is... See, I put, the, I put the, a picture this is so the nerdy. The the okay, so okay, it, it, okay. I I have to I have to separate this for a minute because we're going down like hardcore conspiracy realm levels. There are people that believe. There are many different types of aliens that have came to our planet. And one of those types of aliens is called the Tall Whites. And they are the Asgardians, if you will. Like the tall, Thor-ish people with, you know, blonde hair, kind of like me. But uh, have different colored eyes, like brighter eyes. Is super smart and are controlling our government with the unseen hand. The grays are different. The grays are kind of like the, you know, the the pictures that people are posting right now on the uh, on the live stream. Those are like the grays, the little short, little munchkins running around, doing mm -hmm. with with uh, MacGyver there, uh, yeah. obviously getting in the way there. Um, that th that's that's not the uh when you say as guardians or whatever i'm thinking like thor in the sense of like you know project blue book type aliens that kind of thing yeah. that got documented yeah. there and this is completely conspiracy theory i'm not saying i sign up to any of this i don't i just understand kind of the nutso things that happen i love stargate though that was the best best series mm. but yeah, yeah I, I i i get what you're saying but you know stargate borrowed from a lot of different mythology slash yeah. conspiracy theory and they kind of wrote made their own canon from it so mm -hmm. i feel the same about um stargate as i do about say matrix it was great when it ended at stargate was great when it ended at season eight uh matrix was great at movie one it ended at movie one and they didn't need to do any more see i liked it i liked it uh universe even so but mm -hmm. I'm the universe was good i yeah. just got frustrated with it because they like the last couple seasons of Stargate just or SG one went a little weird and then nobody could commit to anything for any other TV show. So it ended up just getting frustrating to watch. Let me just say uh, Stargate had a much longer run as a successful entity than the matrix did. The matrix movies sucked after the first one. Yes. Sucked. Now with that said, the video game series of the matrix was very good very good even the online matrix community was amazing those two last movies were horrible actually i take that back matrix 2 sucked matrix 3 sucked and then the one that came out with recently was the worst thing ever they should never have that, made that it was that was fan fiction <laughs> horrible 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 yeah. SG One should not even be considered in the same discussion with the Matrix. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that. I, I'm hearing should that I not. should never, 
I'm hearing that I should never go and watch the the recent Matrix movie. Oh, is it's that what so I... bad. Oh, it is no. so <laughs> bad. So I, no, I no, go it. watch it. it. It's like go. It, it's like going to watch the room in high dollar budget bullshit like movie. It is like the room of the Matrix. That's let's, like let's let's just take well, everything that happened in the first three movies and just undo it. Yeah, and that sounds painful. The thing is about Stargate, I did like all of the series that came after it. And I wouldn't care. In fact, I wa- really wanted Universe to go way more seasons than it than just one. I think there was some burnout, I think, and, and that was the problem with, with Universe. Because they had so much more room. Because they were going down a different path. They were following right. the ancients, the people who actually put the Stargates on the planets. You know? Right. And they were... So this was... It was really going to uh, entail a completely different thing, and it was going to end up probably being a lot more like I was Star thinking, Trek, with it, where you have planted Planet of the Week. I uh, see. I'm thinking it, it was it was like Voyager was to the Next Generation. Yeah, yeah. They were kind of lost out in the middle of nowhere, and you know, occasionally they had a way to communicate home, but for the most part, they were just out there. Uh, the, uh, it's well, in a completely different part of the universe. Yeah, and then they the the ending was they were transitioning from one universe to another, and I'm like, oh god, this is going to be good. And then that was it. You know, we we never saw him come back. And uh, I think they could have done tons with that with that premise. Yeah, I Does agree. That... Sliders. Oh, oh, sliders. Sliders. Was awesome. Oh, yes. oh, here you go. That's a deep. That's a deep nerd pull. Mm-hmm. Sliders. Well, I used to. I used to come on like Fox at like night, and I'd watch it on my like CRT TV in my bedroom when I couldn't sleep, and it would just like, oh, it was such a good show. That was yeah. another show that was really good at the start and started getting weird at the last couple seasons. I think it was weird at the beginning, to be honest, but I liked it. Fair. Okay. So here's a here's a poll of a show that's been around for a little while, and I think everybody slept on it. His Dark Materials. Have you watched this? It's the one on HBO, right? Yes. With yeah, the animals, know. the animal partners, or whatever it is. You, you, yeah. The the children. Well, everybody in that world. Uh, there there are no like wild animals necessarily. Some animals are wild because they're higher on te- higher intelligence, but every human has a an animal demon as it's called and they're directly connected in the sense that like if you killed the animal the human would die if you kill the human the animal will die and the animals can take different forms when they're younger but once they lock in at puberty then the animal is locked in that's a whole sub arc of interesting note uh his dark materials is is actually pretty cool cuz it's kind of like harry potter but a show, it's pretty good. It's it's pretty good. Nobody's seen it though, right? I think Nobody watched... is watching this. Nobody's watching mm-hmm. this. I, I've watched like one or two episodes, but I I I got distracted and never went back. Who is the he that is his that has the materials? Uh, it is. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It turns out to be the uh, the father of the main character, who is well, what I think is his dark materials. It 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 dip it dips into like parallel universes. It, it it's kind of hard to explain it. It it's like me trying to explain forty k to you in thirty minutes. It's not going to work. That's fair. Boy, that sounds a lot like something that was on Netflix, but it's easier to me. It's not the same. Man. It's easier for me to explain this show in thirty minutes than me trying to explain forty k in thirty minutes. That would have to be a it's a whole live stream where I would have to have like this crazy wall of BS to explain forty k to people. I think explaining the original book Dune to people is a real head buster. The original book of Dune is very easy to explain. It's the freaking chaos that comes from everything after the first book. The first book's not that hard. The The rest of it is absolutely insanity. 
1980, that book uh, changed my sci-fi fantasy life. Unfortunately, in the line of the books of His Dark Materials Trilogy, Season 3 is the final outing for the series, so there will not be a Season 4. Yeah, but it's it. there's already multiple seasons out there right now. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Each one follows the book. So I'll wait until it comes off of HBO because I don't, I'm not going to pay for another service. I've got too many as it is. Yeah, TX Radio DX, as much as I can go to the mat with anybody on 40K, I am not going to make people listen to me talk about 40K. Like, I am a, I am a Henry Cavill level of insanity for 40K. You're, you're, you're a 40K. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a tabletop warfare I, I 40K, 40K aficionado. 40K. Right. And, and, and I am tens of books into the Horus Heresy and multiple other books on 40K. Like, I am, I so much love how different the sci-fi future of 40K is than every other sci-fi book that exists. It is depressing and sad and no one wins and it's still in the future, but everything sucks and it's great. It's fantastic. But <laughs> what, what, what is, can, can anybody explain what the game is? What oh, is yeah. it you do when you face off to somebody? Else? Oh yeah. It's really simple. The, the game's really simple. So, um, you you pick a you pick an army, right? It could be space orcs, or it could be space marines, or it could be Tau or Tyranids or whatever. And those armies have a proclivity to one thing or the other. Tyranids are kind of like close combat, you know, space bugs type of thing. Like uh, like think of starship troopers, right? They want to get in real close and slash your face up. The orcs are like. Uh, meat is cheap. We'll just throw a lot of them on the field and give them crappy guns and they don't do a lot of damage, but we got a whole lot of them. And so eventually over time, we'll wear you down. Like the tower, the tower, like anime characters, and they're going to have like high, really eff like a uh, effective guns that are good at like longer ranges. But if you get in close, you're going to wipe the floor with them because they're not really good at close combat. Space Marines are like, uber humans that will just murder everything if you get in close the only difference is chaos chaos is even better in close combat so what what a game looks like is you have these squads so everybody says like okay there's a we're going to set a points total for this battle it's going to be like 2000 points 2000 points is a relatively good number and then you go in your handbook and you go okay so i have a space marines book here and i go okay I have painted all these miniatures or some groups of miniatures and I've got 2000 points of miniatures and it's like a, an HQ squad and an artillery squad or a heavy weapon squad. And then a couple of like fast attack squads and another squad of like infantry troops or something like that. I'm making this simple and you set them up on the field. And the field is literally like a, a big table, like a six foot table with little, you know, trees and, you know, buildings that are appropriately sized for the miniatures and all that stuff. And you uh, you set it up like you're going to start a battle and it's two sides coming together to attack each other. And so uh, so it starts out. Everybody's on their own sides and you roll dice to see who goes first. And the person that goes first, they move their troops up based on the movement speed of either their foot troops or the vehicles that the foot troops are in, and they all have different inch ranges of the distances that they can go. And you literally use a measuring tape to like move out the the tanks, or the fast attack squads, all that stuff, to get them into position. And then the enemy troops will move, and then you move, and then at some point your weapons will become in range for the enemy. And then you literally take a measuring tape and measure out like, am I in range? I am in range. Okay, I'm going to fire on you. And then you you roll dice to see who takes damages or whatnot. And then you take those models off of the field. And that's how it works. And it's just a range battle at that point. And then at some point, you get into close combat, and you've got guys with chain swords that just chew up everybody or, you know, whatever it is. Um, what what it's, denotes – is there different – uh, dice rolls based on or just different like 
in D and D you've got the ten sided and the twenty sided and the six sided, or is it all six sided dice that most, you're rolling? Most of it is six sided because, and then Don, you may appreciate this. All the characters are what we call WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. The mm-hmm. characters are supposed to be carrying the items on them for the troops that they have in their area. So if you have like a command troop and he has a special device that allows him enhanced targeting or something like that, he needs to be holding that. And then it's painted to be able to do that thing for the the troops that are in his, his squad I, I or whatever. I thought there were cannons Ooh. and uh, weap- uh, oh, like yeah. large. Oh, hell yeah. No, yeah. Well, the, the, those don't get like twenty sided dice versus the no, no. Or... So that so they have templates. They have blast templates. So when you uh, everybody's like seventy three because I'm talking about forty k. I don't blame you. Go ahead, head out. So there there are uh, there are some uh, war bands or or groups like Imperial Guard is full of these where they have blast ordinance templates where you you measure out the distance that the cannon can see. And you set the center pin over the group you want to, like, blow up. And then you put the blast ordinance template on it. And then everything under that template gets hit by the blast. It's literally like a, a pie tin. You know, like, there's there's different types of radiuses of, of uh, discs that you could put over the top of the people you're blowing up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very... It, it followed... Whereas D and D went more on the role playing side, it followed more the the actual traditional war gaming origins. That, that yeah, I see. Where do guys put together to play this? At I mean, what ages are we talking about? Oh, the ages uh, range like crazy. Henry Cavill plays it today. Did you ever yeah. play? Car Where do they get Josh? together at? Usually uh, a lot of game stores. You there's game multiple stores. game stores that do it, but 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 I would like to add. That as far as like fiction goes, Warhammer has one of the deepest fictions that exists mm-hmm. in gaming. I don't know right. that even D and D is close to the level of depth that for, that Warhammer 40k has. I I don't know. D and D is on purpose not that so that you can make your own story in depth. It, it's it's purpose. So there there's not a lore to D and D. You can basically mm-hmm. build your own world. That's the whole point. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Although. Uh, I mean, you have you have settings that that have lore, like Forgotten Realms, and well, yeah, that's if you want to play them, but you're not required. Right, you're not obligated to do that. Yeah, and you can make up your own (laughs) gods and monsters, and it's like it's completely, totally free, free form. Well, it's kind of like the D and D books on like Elminster versus Dritz and all that, right? Yeah, and and, yeah, (laughs) or uh, Forgotten Realms. Yeah, 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 that that's Forgotten Realms. But yeah, uh, I love D- I love I love the D and D people like ah, that's Forgotten Realms, that's trash. <laughs> well, the, the, no, here here's the thing, and and I've only gotten into this recently because this yeah. is not what I did. But um, there are people that are like in your neck of the woods, so to speak, Hollywood actors, etc. Yeah, that take this on as a uh, improvisational type thing, and so you can literally go and watch them play D and they are acting out what's going on oh yeah on it's, the it's thing. A real and, thing and it, yep. yeah and i uh, the the one that i follow is called the dungeon run yep and the first season of it which went on for three years they were only going to do 10 and then they ended up doing over 100 and the campaign was so well thought out but the guy had been working on it for over a year the dungeon master probably well over a year i say he's he, he was working on it for over 10 years and uh, he and his buddy decided to put it on TV, and it did well. And then they quit, and now they're on Twitch, and they're doing even better on Twitch. But then there's like Critical Role and some other groups that are just like this, and they're basically just actors that are a- right. acting once a week. And it, do, and it it's absolutely fascinating. Do, do you but know I've that guy played. Brennan? Brennan, he's a he's like a DM. You hear no, about this the, guy at all? The the guy that I'm that I was following for for a year, his name was Jeff Kanata, and you might oh know yeah Jeff Kanata from yeah the yes, uh, he was the DM and he was it was his idea uh, or this this uh, over a year campaign the first one was his idea Jeff Kanata uh what what's the show the original podcast they all did it was oh, the three I, guys it was the three I've guys. Heard, 
The Totally Awesome yeah. Show? It was The Totally Awesome Show, right? Yeah, that may be it. And then he went on to, uh, uh, he, he had something to do with G4 and Twit TV, too. Uh, and uh, was with those guys for a while. Now he's actually, uh, he's out in Atlanta doing uh, or hosting some kind of show for fantasy football, which I don't, I don't. Oh get, yeah, but yeah, he was into fat. Uh, wow, I don't know why I remember that, but yeah, he was into yeah. fantasy football like well, ten plus the, years ago when I was listening to his podcast. Yeah, this summer he's coming back uh, to DM uh, for another. Uh, 10 or so episodes or whatever. Oh, we got uh, it's Brennan Lee Mulligan. Is that the guy? Is that the guy that's all over TikTok? Uh what what is Brennan what is Brennan the DM for? He's the DM of so many things right now. This guy's insane. He is as far as like nerd culture goes, Brennan is out of control. Well, the guys that are on the the top of the heap are apparently critical role. And there's a number of them that do that. But he's they're, Dimension they're, Twenty. Brennan's Dimension Twenty. Okay, Critical Role is making over a million dollars a year. Holy smokes! Oh, crit- critical Critical Role's got their own publishing. Ask company. him about yeah, birds. Yeah, yeah. I've seen they're that getting... video. I've seen multiple videos about Brennan on birds. Let's get all of them in ham radio. Pass on the word. Mm. I'll, I'll 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 join. I'll, I'll be the uh, the the. Uh, the the D and D character that's the radio guy. How do how do we get that to work in in Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> well, you need some sending stones. I actually mm. I actually did that. <laughs> well, me. and uh, uh, what uh, warlocks uh, have the ability to to uh, communicate? Uh, yeah, like with a familiar. Pretty much. No, they they uh, they can talk to people through their minds yeah. uh, at at distance. It's, oh, okay. it's just one of their That's, inherent yeah. abilities. Well, but I then mean, they have to deal with it, yeah, their yeah. god or whatever it is that's giving them their warlock powers. So you, usually it's a demon. I mean, but. yeah, usually <laughs> it's a demon. Yeah. Or some dark spirit, but, you know. Oh, my I God. Nerd. We're, we're, we're a bunch of nerds. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm starting to die over here, so I'm going to wrap things up. Yeah, I'm hey, I'm falling hey, asleep. Hey, Josh, I got, got a question. Uh Actually, ham related. If you don't mind me coughing too much, because I'm I'm at that yeah. point. My voice. Did, did I did I hear you say that you, you my voice up is a spent. Par infed, infed? I did, and I'm gonna be putting it up. I got to get it up to uh, do a bunch of. Well, I I'm just excited to get an 80 meter antenna back on the air. You oh you got the gosh. short one, right? Because you, you I did I did I got the short one. Let yeah. me let me know how you like it because I've got the long one. Okay, and I'm I'm curious. That's that's what I've talked to you on a couple times. So. Uh, but uh, I love the quality of it, man. I I I think it's like you know, yeah. And oh. when are, when are you going to do your Sark Track video, Don? That is a fantastic question. So you got yours, I think. Yeah, right? I just came in today. Okay, while you were on the stream. <laughs> so oh. I opened it up. And I'm like, what the hell is all of this? So, but anyway, so. Uh, I have the right, I have the exact perfect tripod for this, but I need to get that cap that they talk about that I can, I can, I can screw into. Tell me where the information is for what you're doing. Uh, there's a website, Uh, the, the, the Sark Track website has all the info. Oh yeah. Okay. You read the user's manual online at, and they get, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there, there's two things I need to buy. I, I already got the hobby box to to put the lead shot in, and I got mm-hmm. tons of lead shot, so that's no problem. But what I have to get is the uh, the angle iron to act as a counterpoise for the arrow antenna that you shove onto oh, it. Yeah, yeah. I need a piece of angle iron, so I'll, I'll I don't know. I guess I go to Home Depot and cut that down. That's not a big deal. Uh, get that, and then I need that cap. I need to figure out if it's like a, an aluminum cap or what what kind of cap I'm getting that I can tap the holes into because they they do uh, it's in the kit they do have a little uh, flanged piece of metal that you can screw into a cap that goes onto the tripod and mm-hmm. then the tri- and then the body of the whole thing goes on top of that and then that that's what gives it the the X Y rotation. 
Yeah, I I actually have to buy the arrow antenna and the tripod and all the other things you're talking about too. So because I had nothing, but this was too cool to me to pass up. Oh yeah, and no, it, so it's it's really uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I can tell. I mean, this is a little box. It's got two rotators on it, and it, it wow, it, it it looks really neat. And then I just need to get all of the parts, and I I've got the I think it's a Raspberry Pi or, or Arduino. I've got both. So either one that it requires, I've got I've got those parts, but I'm going to have to buy I think you just use those. a computer. You can just use a laptop if you want to, right? Uh, oh, okay. I thought there was more to it than that, but uh, maybe I'm, you know, again, I, I, I'm just, I, I, when you were talking about it, I'm like, I want one of those things. And, you know, I'm not afraid to build anything. And, uh, I don't have anything that'll do, um, or that, that'll do satellite, right. but I have enough satellite radios. So the radios I've got, I don't have any, uh, two meter 440 type of antennas, mm -hmm. much less a directional one. And so, cause I've got the sun SDR has two meters on it. The, uh, flex can take uh, i've got multiple uh, transverters on that because i was lucky enough to get those before the ukraine got hit um so i've got plenty of everything i need as far as radio goes but i don't have any type of rotator and when they were talking about it, it was like or the cost of like the yesu type uh and all of that man, oh yeah so, it's way cheaper no, yeah yeah and this is you know portable and small, but and, and it's not for like outdoors permanently, but that's not, I, I wouldn't be doing that anyway. Oh yeah. So. It's, it, it's a temporary setup kind of thing and it'll do now, all the, all the stuff, the X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Now I'll be honest with you. When I get it built, um, I'm going to share it with, uh, Frank and, uh, I, I, I haven't decided about Jason yet, but uh, at least Frank and I, I, what I mean is, you know, we'll go out to the park one day and yeah. And, and Oh spend yeah. Some time Frank deserves, it. Frank deserves it. He needs to get yes. on the satellites. He does. He does. You're, you're right for helping him out. He, yeah. He yeah. has put in the effort. He's tried really hard. So yeah, well, I, I told if him, if you can I help him, him out, that would be great. That would be, yeah. Cool. I told him when I bought it that I, yeah. you know, Hey Frank, I'm, I've got this whole thing. I, yeah, Oh yeah, boy, that sounds great. So yeah, he's excited, but I've got a, build the whole thing first i don't think that i don't really want to put that yeah. into his hands huh you want to find uh all the uh possible the schools around there that have football fields with a clear line of sight to the horizon that does uh, help. most of the parks you really want to yeah. be able to hit um, 15 degrees and below and the well, elk might work on that system i don't know yeah the the antenna shouldn't matter whether it's elk or uh it's uh, only era. the balancing. So the uh, the Star Trek people, they built uh, their kit around the arrow. So the angle iron distance and the little box they use and the counterweight is built around the, uh, the arrow. The yeah. arrow does provide more gain over the elk antenna, which that's not to say that you necessarily need it, but at the same time... Yeah, it it's uh they're they're both good antennas, but the arrow is a uh, a bit more beefy if you think about it that way. Yeah, and I'm gonna probably do what what they recommend because, like I said, I have nothing, so uh, it'll be uh, an entire build experience, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, that I would love to see that, man. I I never could, but I I'm still thinking about the hex beam though. Right. Yeah, and if you the, retire, you're going to be able to make it to to some of the stuff with us. I think so. Again, the the biggest issue that I have with that uh, is going to be what do I do with the cats for uh, that length of time? But um, lock them in the I'm van. Up. Lock them in the van. <laughs> no, they they don't take to to small spaces, and they are fast. So so straight up, straight up, you know that like, uh, well, I I don't want to out uh, Mike, but. Satan was like chilling for a couple of days while he was down south. Like, Satan yeah, was fine. A, a couple of days. Cats you are can good, do. man. Cats are yeah. fine most of the time. Yeah, as long as as long as their litter box is big enough, you got no. I'm not kidding, but um, yeah, I mean, well, they'll just shit on. They'll just shit on your floor. You're good. 
Uh, yeah. And, uh, but, um, the, the thing is though, I, yeah, for a few days or a couple of days, you're okay, but you want to make sure that, that you, they're not going to knock their water over and be without water while you're right. or anything like that. But, uh, after that, like in, in the thing is like, I was thinking about coming to Huntsville. Well, it'll take me a couple of days to drive out there and a couple of days to drive back. So plus the, plus the show and, and I'd like to come out there early, but so that's like a week and I don't know that a week they're going to be. Uh, well, I mean, Huntsville is pretty much Saturday, Sunday. So the rest of it is just. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, but I, 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 out, you know. how they, how, you don't get there in a day and you don't get back in a day. And well, it, it's true. like, cause I, I, I have three to, hours, but <laughs> yeah, I know. See, I drive and th- see the unfortunate thing is we had a really good ham fest here. Uh, ham, ham com. Yeah, and yeah. it's gone. And that one, when uh, COVID hit, they said, okay, this is it. We're not doing it anymore. And so it's not like it's coming back, although there's rumors. But we don't have anything around us. And uh, I'm sure you've seen maybe some of Jason's videos about the, like, Belton and a couple of things like that. But they are not what Hamcom was or uh, Dayton or Hamvision. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of them around here. A lot of the smaller ones just kind of folded up and said, we give up. Well, we're getting some of the smaller ones back, but they're the small ones like they were small. This was like the ARRL North Texas or North Central Texas ham fest. And I think the one in Houston uh, coming up next week that Mike's talking about is the ARRL uh, South Texas or whatever. They- state convention or whatever yeah it's a state convention and those are always bigger because when the arrl comes then the vendors tend to come as well yeah but yeah, yeah I, the, this I, had all the vendors and everything the mfj everybody but in in forums I, and everything i was going to go to the dalton georgia one uh this morning but i woke up about six or seven and it's only an hour hour and a half away from yeah. me here in tennessee it's not too far it's just down the highway all right, well, and but it I was gotta pouring go. Pouring down rain, so I gotta yeah. go. Where the rain kicked up, I'm gonna start reeling the antenna in and packing it up, guys. All right, well, all have right. A good night. Enjoy the time with the family, and uh, yeah, and Josh, I, we re- really hope you get to feeling better too. Uh, yes, I'm, sir. I'm, I'm feeling I'm, better, but I was still coughing a lot, and particularly as we got longer yeah, yeah. in the after chat. So I apologize for the coughing and all that. Uh, Leia could not get her prescription, so I will go pick it up in the morning to get her on the uh, mm. straight and narrow. But, uh, yeah, uh, podcast will be back next week. That's all I got to say. So okay, appreciate you all. We'll wrap it up here on the Discord, and I'll, I'll kill things out on the uh, on the other live stream. So thanks, everybody, on the Discord. Take it easy. 73, yeah, I, Josh. 73, Josh. And, and I did drop my video this week, so y'all go watch it. All right, go check it out. Don N five SKT. Don, what's your YouTube channel again? That's exactly what it is. Then we got it. We got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, because I refurb my uh, DX Commander, and I don't think anybody's done a video on that. There you uh, go. Oh, that's good. So. Yeah, we need. To, yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, guys, take All it right. easy. I'll talk to you later. Seventy three. All right. So we're. Uh... <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> No, that's a good time to wrap up because I'm starting to lose it. Everybody on the YouTube side or the Twitch side, thank you so much for watching. Uh, If you are a patron, uh, particularly of the producer level, go vote this week because, well, right now, don't don't vote this week. Go vote right now for the uh, next Saturday show, which is going to be the patron picks episode. If you pick the the particular option that people are picking, then we have to make a secondary vote. So go do that now, please. Just go do that so I know, and I'll start the secondary vote early so that people can vote on the uh, on the radio that we'll talk about. But I really appreciate you. Appreciate all the support. I'm sorry I was coughing and sniffling and all that stuff, but uh, I'm trying to hang in there the best I can. And uh, I do. I do. I appreciate you guys. I hope this helps a lot. I really do this because I I love the hobby and I love helping people get started and 
getting out there and getting radioactive. So I will wrap things up. I will play the memes, and I will talk to you later. Thank you for watching. 73.